Welcome everybody to Toons Day Night. I'm your host MC Toon, and tonight, right now, we've got a discussion on uh, on uh, uh, Bryant. You're you're feeding back. Um, <laughs> sorry, with uh, with Bryant Myers, who's who's in the wings here on Dearth, David Weiss, and some of his lies. He got caught in a bit of a lie here in his uh, his the India. India's Moonlander. He he made some claims. He tried to claim that he didn't make those claims, and we found him making those claims. So let me get uh, let me get it up here with with Bryant. Let's see here. Let's see here. I had to. He, it was feeding back, so that's why I had to take out the uh, thing out of my ear. Yep. Yep. The feedback is is off. There we go. There is Bryant. How you doing, Bryant? Doing great. How you doing? Been a while. It's it been, been a while, yeah. So uh, you you have um, kind of taken some time off, and now you're you're back temporarily, right? Yeah, temp I got some time off here. Uh, do we still have feedback? I'm, am I hearing feedback, or is that? Uh, I don't hear. Maybe hear a little. Oh no, I do hear some. I don't. I hear some. You're not using headphones. That's probably why. Oh, should I get my headphones on? Yeah, it usually helps. Let me let me just try that. Well, you can just kind of lead in. All right. So um, you may have seen if you've been on on uh, on YouTube or sorry, not YouTube on Facebook or anywhere where flurfs can post memes. You've probably seen them posting uh, pictures of the animation of India's lander. And it, it's an animation. It's not it's not uh, meant to be a real picture, a real like you can see from the side um, where it would have to be in order for a camera to view it. It would have to be some number of meters away from the actual um, lander while it went down. So how could there be any camera going with it? And of course, flat earthers are like, oh, where? Who is filming that? Well, nobody. It's an animation. And they're like, it's really fake looking. Of course, it's not supposed to be real looking. It's always meant to be an animation. Um, so, Flat Earthers have made that claim. And, uh, and, and it's, you know, you could see somebody that's kind of a, a noob. Who's not been around much, but but a flat earther that's got a hundred and sixty thousand or whatever Dearth has. Dearth has more than a hundred thousand subscribers. You'd expect them to lead the way in being truthful and honest. So I was hearing some echoing, um, but but I might not anymore. So all right, yeah. So anyway, I'll let you know if I hear any more echoing. Okay, let's see. So, oh, I hear a little echo. Yeah, we got. What what's causing that? Do you know? Um, this is what I usually do to set up. I don't know. Yeah, like I'm hearing. So, if you take off your headphones, do you hear any noise at all? Is it going? Yeah, I can into hear the, the monitor. It's going into the room. That's that's what you gotta turn off somehow. Yeah. Um, so, shoot. Uh, I don't know. Can you turn it down? Anyway, let me let me read this here. I've a uh, couple things here. Yeah, I hear it a lot. So, all right. Steps Steps eighty five is a member at Einstein. Was that from the last stream? Sometimes it gives a notification twice. Tara Dickoff says my weekly tithe to the Temple of Tomb, and then. Uh, Come by. Come by. Dave Kircher says, thank Titty Cocket. It's two times Toons Day. Dave, you know, I was thinking about you today, Dave. Today, Dave. Um, I watched the Dungeons and Dragons movie that came out this year. And on there, they have a portal. Um, it's it's a magic wand. You 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 zap it at, at one thing and you zap it at another, and it makes a portal between the two, just like your game, Dave. I was thinking about you. I don't know if you've seen it. It was a great movie. 
Siggy Sigwald says, I made it another Tunes Day. Glad to have you here, Siggy, who then gifted 50 memberships. Thank you very much for that. Followed by, followed by, there it is, 666 Argentinian Reals. Says MC Tune, I missed you. Tuesdays are a date night. Ooh, it's difficult to be here, but today other plans got in the way, so I made it. Hail Sagan. Well, hey, you know, you could spend date night watching this. What more romantic thing is there than watching a Flat Earth debate? Can you imagine just how much she would be jello in your hands after an evening of watching a Flat Earth debate? Um... Uh, I could I could be completely misjudging um, females' interest in watching flat earth debates. Frank Knight says audio settings might be reset. Make him check the microphone source. So <laughs> Judy got this says Siggy, you're amazing. Thank you for keeping MC Tune going almost single handedly. Uh, Lorda says maybe he has it, uh, your stream open in another tab. So could be Bryant. Do you have, could you check your other tabs to see if, if the live stream, the video is actually playing in a different tab. Um, I watched, I watched the, uh, the, the movie because I saw somebody on Facebook mention, I don't remember who, but it was somebody, somebody who follows me because it came up in my feet. I don't remember who it was, but uh, that's why I watched it. So. Oh, that explains it. Okay. I was getting ready for the video, so okay. I didn't realize I had it open. Ah, all right. Okay. So Dave okay. says he's Dave says he's seen the movie. So Dave, did did you get any royalties for that that little thing? Maybe not. All right. Siggy says I tried to explain the appeal of Tunes Day, and it was a disaster. Ah, see, some people just have no. No class, you know. What better way to spend a Tuesday night than watching a flat earth debate? Certainly a few hundred of you agree. So thank you for that. And Judy, yeah, somebody had sent me that article, Judy, that uh, Lake Titicaca is drying up. The the water is is going away. That's bad news. It needs to come back. So, all right. Well, Bryant, I think that we've okay. solved that problem. Yes. Can you hear me okay? I hear you, and I don't hear the feedback anymore. Yeah, that was the tab that was open. Yeah, I just had, I'm watching you pull, you drink your tab, right? And I, of course, I have the tab open <laughs> at the same time. Because it was fun listening in the background, uh, that debate, the first part of it. So I was just kind of listening to the audio. But anyway, we figured it out. Um, yeah. So, uh, yes, I Probably a lot of you have seen, I've posted a couple of videos confirming the Chandra on landing was real, just like I did with Artemis. A uh, big passion of mine, kind of, because it, to me, it just so um, soundly debunks flat Earth, the fact that we can shatter their dome and land on the moon. Um, so that's why I'm so passionate about both Artemis. And um, of course, it's just very interesting. I just love the science and the, the whole uh, program itself. But I don't know. It's just to me, it's just such a nail in the coffin on flat earth. I mean, they just are coming up with nothing this time. I mean, at least with Artemis, they came up with some stuff like the images were the shadows. And then uh, uh, Eric debated the whole thing with the, the low resolution JPEG image. And he did a whole uh, fake photo forensics with that. Um, but this one, they haven't really done anything. I mean, I think the only thing I've seen is on where is Wally someone. Um, what's his name? Um, I uh, showed that the rover, he couldn't believe that the rover could go in and out of a 10 centimeter crater. And it's like, that has suspension that can handle that. It's like, it's not like and a 10 centimeter crater. There's not, there's not as much gravity either. So yeah. it's, it doesn't, right, yeah. it weighs one sixth as much as it yeah. does here. It's, it's really not. But, but that was the only objection I've seen, except just for people crying fake. I mean, that's just when we go through um, uh, David Weiss's dearth stuff. All he has is just fake. There's no actual substance to it, except for he does the reversal, you know, the burden of proof reversal on me and the shifting of the burden of proof fallacy, right? Yeah. That's really all he had. Um, yeah. So, 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 and he puts, he put on a screen, he said, uh, um, the something about, you know, um, I forgot the wording, big claims, 
we need yeah. big evidence is, oh, right. is big, the paraphrase. Yeah. What exactly. are, do, do you remember the wording so that I uh um it was something yeah, something like that. Fan you know, um yeah. fantastic claims need fantastic evidence or something like that. I mean, that, that yeah, that's it. From like a Hollywood movie, he was taking it from some like um dramatic thing. So I kind of have little clips of his attempted because he's kind of targeting me, right? Yeah. And today he emails me, he's all upset with the video I did. And he just can't believe that I would do that. And he just doesn't want me to email him and talk to him again. He's like, lose my email. Don't contact me ever again. <laughs> but, did he he, didn't even... but did he, but you sent him another email. Did he respond? No, he hasn't. I was hoping okay. I'd have a little extra gold for tonight, but I mean, maybe worth, maybe it'd be worth checking before we get off. Because <laughs> 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 for the most part, we kind of keep things friendly, but he kept saying, lose my email, but then he'd email me back. So we've been going through about 30 exchanges now, right? Yeah. And and literally 20 exchanges ago is when he told me to stop emailing him. But then he email, emails me back again saying, Brian, look at this. What I like he said, I did this video for you. Right. And so I I mirror his words and say, look, Dave, I did this video for you. You know, <laughs> it, to me, it didn't. It's kind of flattering that I'm like getting on a channel with 100,000 subscribers. Right. Um, that he's going to target. I don't I don't mind, really. But he's he's he, he didn't like the, the video that I did to him because. Um, Obviously, he had no answer. I was expecting at least one little thing, like one objection. All he said was, "You're miss because I put the daylight doesn't, you know, um, daylight uh, <laughs> daylight doesn't come from the sun, you know that little, um, and his uh, spectroscopy doesn't need a container." So he didn't like that I included those. <laughs> like, <laughs> like you 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 take me out of context, and it's like, no, I I actually watched it, Dave. You, uh, D Professor Dave, clearly said. You know that so you're saying that daylight doesn't come from the sun and then you said absolutely and then he's like well where does it come from and it's like and then dave professor dave says well it's coming from the sunlight and the part you know it's the rayleigh scattering right the particles scatter the light but that light is still coming from the sun and then dave's like well no you don't understand or something he so he's like still dismissing it it's like no see you're we didn't take it out of context you were still saying that daylight doesn't come from even even scattered light. So, um, so he didn't like that. He he like really took offense that I put that in the video. But yeah. it's like, I don't know. But anyway, but yeah, that's kind of why I wanted to kind of go through the the whole thing because as everything every everybody here has seen on all these flat Earth forums and Instagram accounts, Facebook, just spamming with all of these you know images of their you know animation, right? So, it, of course, anybody with half a brain that watches the the landing can see that that's not meant to be the actual lander, right? And um, you, but that's why I want. Did to kind you? Of play. I have a few of them. I went and, uh, captured. Yeah, I put. If we go through the video, like I kind of leading up to that, what I just said a little bit, because I kind of wanted Is to take it from his video. Okay. So then we can, All right. We can kind of talk about each little segment leading right. up to the big lie there. I do have just for a minute. I have a, an example of what we're oh, talking good, okay. about on screen. To yeah. my fellow flat earthers, just remember those who mock us believe this is real. So that that is literally a flat earther posted that. Yeah. Claiming that we think that's real, we yeah. don't think that's real. That was not labeled as real. Flat earthers. We're like, hoo, 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 we caught him. They thought they right. caught it. Like, right. <laughs> you didn't do your research. Isn't that the thing yeah. you all say you should do? Do your own research. Yeah. You didn't go yeah. look at the original video. You didn't go check to see, was this su suggested to be a camera aimed yeah. at the lander? No, it was yeah, no. not. So, yeah, I kept telling them, it's like, watch the original. I, I watched the live stream, the one that was kind of the abbreviated version that's on YouTube. Yeah. It's like, it's so clear what it is. But, but yeah, play the um, the first, maybe two first, because then we can talk about it. Then, but then okay. how Dearth, Dearth kind of does this 180 reversal, and we'll kind of see the whole thing, because because he's kind of, um, well, I'll just he like to put it in the video. Because, um, looking at the visuals. <laughs> But this is from this is from dearth yeah this is from dearth yeah this is his um and, his and it's video. important it's important that the lady said we are looking at the visuals yes right so um 
yeah so then the next one it gets because again i'm just going through his video because we can kind of lead up because i haven't actually done the rebuttal to his video about me yet i'm just kind of i did a little bit in my video i just posted but i haven't really done the complete rebuttal yet so i thought it'd be fun to kind of go through some of that here oh and you said do you seriously think that they were intending that image to be actual victim lander right There's that's the one. Now here's, here's the second one. Of course we know it's fake, but that's all they showed the world as proof of a moon landing. This is Dearth video again. Interesting. Yeah, let's let's not go to number three yet. Let's just oh, do this one. This is just two. number two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, number two. So this is then a clip of you talking. He emails me this. Yeah. Then he updates his own video, which has this whole cartoon on the moon theme, and and basically says the same thing. So why didn't he say this in the first place? Why all of a sudden, three days later, is he now just kind of confessing that, of course, we don't think this was real footage? And again, flat earthers didn't get the memo. These memes have just been constantly just pouring and spamming, you know, uh, social media, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. This is the yeah, end. This is the okay, end. Yeah, stop, stop. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so yeah, basically, I emailed him just saying, do you really, because he did this whole cartoon on, cartoon on the moon video, right? Yeah. saying that there's a cartoon on the mood. I'm like, I'm like, Dave, I emailed him. Do you really think that this was meant to be the original video? It's like, as much as, I mean, no flat earther is really smart, but it's like, it, you know, you and Witsit seem to have some like intelligible, like intellect that can kind of at they least try. talk intelligibly. Yeah, yeah. try, right? But it's they... like, you can't seriously think that these were actually meant to be the real images. And so that's when he emails me back. And listen to this, he pins that comment right after he emails me okay and I, and I looked at the timestamps. it's like wait a minute he's and it was three days after he posts that video yeah so for three full days went by with all these memes just blasting out ridiculous memes nobody really was was really thinking that you know that wasn't meant to be the original real, real um, footage right and dirt didn't even anywhere make any hint that that was just supposed to be an you know an illustration um and it, so again, he, it's, he, he pinned that comment right after he emails me. And then, and now we want, this is why I want to show the next video because you and I, you, you actually sent this to me. Um, so this is after he admits that he knows that that wasn't meant to be the real footage. So let's actually, just make the, that clear. I here. think the timing on this. Okay. This was probably before the email exchange. Oh, was it before? You. Okay. Was it but, before? Okay. But it's important to note that in the email exchange with you, he he had uh, he had said that he knew that it wasn't presented. Yeah, as, right, exactly as right. Real, yeah, right. Oh, it's like but, of course. Yeah, he's like, yeah. of course we know this wasn't meant but to be real. This video says otherwise. Yeah, let's play it. Yeah. So he's here. He's talking to a high school group. This is the yes, uh, no. this is the Indian moon landing. I'm gonna there's the 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 that's the 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 head of India. This is the actual footage from the Indian moon landing. That's the footage. This is that's the it? footage. That's this, this is the footage. It's not landed yet. Give it a second. It's gonna land. I think that's a video game. You know, this is like a 1970 video game, and then everyone's clapping. It's, it's unbelievable. Right. So. Yeah, so I mean, it's pretty clear that I didn't hear much about, oh, this was not intended to be the real footage there or anything like that. This is like he's making it look like we thought this was supposed to be the real footage. Yeah. And this is where all the flat earthers took off with those memes, just in all directions of the earth, right? They just were just blasting them everywhere. It was, I, I was seeing some of my flat earth friends just really get on board. And I got actually a lot, I, I got unfriended a couple with a couple of them because I just I tried to point out, it's like, these are not meant to be the original real yeah. images. And they, they didn't get the memo. They well, just <laughs> the, there was no memo sent. There was the, no memo. the flat earth leadership yeah. did not did not try to be to tell the the people not telling the truth that they're yeah. supposed to be truthers. Yeah, and, exactly. And, you know that really tells you a lot. Yeah, right. It does if you're a truther, then when somebody in your group says things that you know are not true. You will yeah. call them out if you're a truther. Yeah. You'll call them out. If you're out. a truther, yeah. That's such a if, that's such a if you are not a truther, yeah, and somebody in your group says a lie, 
then and you don't say anything about it well then yeah because you're not a truther but a truther will insist that his truther friends yeah. tell the truth yeah and then of course eric dubay re releases a video a couple days ago and basically saying the same I mean, he wasn't making it clear at all that this was not intended to be the real footage he's didn't get the memo either and yeah. his video yeah well he, he really dubay and like, dearth don't talk they don't get along. they don't talk but du I'm dubay saying, like, let's just be clear the 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 flat earth pie is not big and and so the all of the top flurfs vie for a slice of that pie so you got right. dubay over here who wants his slice to be bigger yeah and dearth yeah. over here that's trying to edge into dubay's right yeah They're, they don't they there's no reason for them to get along because yeah any and any success that dearth gets is success that dubay then lacks yeah but, but besides the Durst pin comment in his email to me, I haven't really seen anything in the Flat Earth like leadership to say that, oh, yeah, we know that that wasn't meant to be the real footage. Have you seen other? No. Any... And I've not yeah. seen any Flat Earthers calling out <laughs> other Flat Earthers for lying about it. Oh, and his pin comment only got like 17 likes. And I, I, <laughs> last, I checked it today even. Like, it, it, so it's like they're not even really reading it, almost like they're in denial. They don't want to even think that Durst pinned that comment. Yeah. Well, you know, so I think I, I want to return to to the, yeah. the video that he showed to that classroom of students. Yeah, yeah. He did not preface it with "this is a visualization." He didn't come no. at come at it later with "this is a visualization." He didn't yeah. talking to them. He didn't say this was the only evidence they gave as proof. He didn't say that. Yeah. He said yeah. that in your pin comment. He claimed yeah. in the yeah. pin comment that that was the only thing they gave as proof. Yeah. To be clear, India has no responsibility to anybody else to prove anything yeah. to flat earthers. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's like, but, but <laughs> oh, to, it's <laughs> very important. He did not do anything. His complete point in showing that yeah. was to try to point out and make the, the their, that audience believe that there was fakery, intentional fakery going on. That was his purpose. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And then, Dearth is a scammer. And you know, when I talked to him in that private Skype, like one-on-one -on -one for an hour, I mean, I really think he believes the earth is, I mean, maybe he's just convinced himself. Oh yeah. I mean, I, he, he, does, he does not seem like a poet to me when I really talk to oh, him. I, I'm, I'm not I'm accusing like, him of being a poet. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm accusing him of intentionally lying to yeah. further yeah. his grift. Yeah. And then, of course, when I do send, well, that's we can watch maybe the next video real quick. It's not. I'm trying. I tried to cut out a lot because Durst just has these images with a lot of silly music, right? So yeah, I did my best to shorten it. But is, is but then I actually the next video will show that I did email him an actual image of the lander. It's like, okay, Durst, you want an image? Here you go. Right. So let's let's see what he okay, says. Here. This is number four. Yeah, I turned off the the uh, the cutesy music. Oh, that's fine. Perfect. So, <laughs> I'm glad you Not did. that everyone is fighting over the clearly fake animation graphics. They now show photos and videos from the moon. So remember, he has already claimed that the, the lander was the only thing that they gave as proof, is the, is yeah. the word he used. Yeah, and that's, that was the whole purpose of my last video, was to show all, I mean, just a a lot of different pieces of evidence that it actually happened yeah all right so there there is the the uh the photographs from a uh, prag pragyan yep pragyan uh, rover is, just the, the, rover. the, the nav navigation camera which was never meant to be a high definition yeah, camera it's, not a high def, yeah. it's a navigation yeah. camera yeah so so that he's like this would be impossible to fake so no, he's just basically do, saying, look how it yeah. could be. So you could did, just, did yeah. you just, all right. So they look similar. Therefore they're the same. Is that it? Well, what's, yeah, I mean, what's that's your... why he's saying, he... <laughs> be, be, I mean, be, because it can be fake he, because, you know, we have the ability to make fake thing, you know, CGI in Hollywood. He thinks that this could easily be faked. It's like, okay, yeah. well, but what's do, your, what's your evidence that it's fake though? And I kept telling him the analysis. Yeah. He never and did I, the I, analysis. Yeah, and and you'll see. I when we get to number seven, I did a little bit of of, of uh, in error level analysis, but I haven't gotten anything from them on the actual images. And um, yeah. and there's a lot of great images if you just Google ISRO um, images. 
um, or um, Chandrayaan images, it, it comes right up number one. And just beautiful, just the, the, all the gallery of all the images and the, all the video footage is all right there. And you could, um, I, I download it as a web page and I can convert to a TIFF file. So I was able to get like five, five six megabyte files. Hmm. Well, I, so, uh, I haven't yet had a look. Um, I'll see if I can uh, grab the original, the highest resolution ones that they have. Of course, you know, the, 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 they only publish what they publish in India. They only publish what they publish. It's yeah, not... India doesn't have the same charter that NASA does. NASA's charter says that everything that they do has to be public domain. I have no yeah. idea what ISRO's charter is. Do, is that the case? Um, yeah. Probably not. And, and so. it's, it's important to note that India only had a $70 million budget for this launch. And taking pictures was not a priority for this launch. They had a very... Yeah clear objective of different we can go through some of those it's really cool some of the things that they did the tests but taking images of the earth was not one of them that was not part of the plan that was not like their objective and um so whatever images we got is what we got right and and to me the big thing is like well if they really wanted to fake this they could sure have created a lot better you know definition images to make it look more real right i mean the fact that it i mean well if you're gonna these fake are raw, raw and real yeah if you're gonna fake it don't who would fake a crash right <laughs> why why would you fake a crash and yeah. then later come back and and have a successful one why right. not either like so so let's say well they faked the crash to show how hard it is yeah but then come back later and do a successful one why wouldn't yeah. they just do a successful one from the beginning because yeah. Because I have, but you could you could make a case. Well, they they just want to make it look real so hard that they'll never go out to space. Right. Like, right. Well, SpaceX is on is on has already done um, how many this year? They're on track to do a hundred launches this year. Oh wow! Is that is that many? Wow. Um. Yeah. And uh, I think that's the number. I just saw today that they they hit to yesterday. They did as many launches yesterday as they had done yeah. all the previous year, I think. Oh, and, wow. And we're in September. I don't know. I, the point I mean, is, this is, the point is yeah. they've done a ton. If <laughs> why? And it's going to keep coming. That's the thing. Why is, Why would you fake so many? If you're just faking it, just it, fake this a is smattering. Keep picking up. Yeah. The whole, all these space programs are picking up in momentum. So flat earthers are going to have to keep saying, crying fake even more and more and more and more, right? Yeah. Because oh, we yeah. got Artemis going up again and we got all this stuff as planned you know i mean heck india's gone already gone to the sun right after their Chandrayaan mission they already launched and um you know the probe to the sun yeah um, and so now here's a little pro tip um it gets hot near the sun right yeah so what you want to do is you want to land at night hmm. <laughs> that's not as hot then yeah yeah so um but uh so let's see. Let, did we play number four yet? Because um, um, yep, we did four. I got okay, five ready. Four. If you want to do five, okay, yeah, we'll do five ready because this this right here is really all that Dirth had, and you'll see here. Yeah. So here, this is, this is like his big um, trump card. He played on me. Yeah. So you you said to him, you have zero evidence that the landing did not happen, um, and you say I have plenty of evidence it did, including some good stuff from amateur astronomers looking into uh, the actual transmission of Vikram. Yeah. Let's see what his his response to that is. You say, where's your evidence? It's fake. Uh, and then he says, this is called the burden of proof reversal fallacy. That's what he, his, his answer yep. is. Or the shifting so, of the burden of proof fallacy. Yeah. yeah. So the thing is, though, you did provide the evidence. That's the thing. So, I did, right? So I, yeah. I sent it to him. He didn't even address it at all. You, you can't reverse it. You've given him the evidence. He did not analyze it and show that. So he just said it's fake and that's yeah. it. Nothing else. I was going to ask you, but because, you know, I did look up the fallacy online. And of course, this doesn't apply to well-established truths and facts that are kind of kind of the status quo is established as, you know. And so there are cases where this reversal of, yeah, that's what I yeah. was looking for. So, so this is game. this is the debater's guide, right? So. This when when in this is in you know kind of instructions for Lincoln Douglas debates or competitive debates. So in a competitive debate, um, the, the there's a there's two sides. There's a side that's the kind of the status quo side, and there's the side that's the 
the, the one that's proposing something else. So the burden lies with, in this format, the burden lies with the people that are against the status quo. So the status quo people kind of have any, they don't, but they kind of have an easier position because yeah. they don't have to, um, they don't have to defend the status quo to begin with. But to yeah. be fair, in science um, or in a debate, that's not a, a point driven yeah, yeah, debate like yeah. that. it's not really the case um uh in oh. science it 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 certainly is right there's there's this this mountain of evidence right so yeah. if you want to say all of this evidence here a hundred years of something right whatever the topic is and if you want to say that there's something else happening and that that's wrong well yeah you you don't get to just ignore that stuff okay right Right. So that's that's the the if it's already been a, you know, a, a lot of empirical evidence for something. Right, you can't right. just say, I have a different idea and I'm going to ignore that. You can't really yeah. do that. And then that's why I actually provided the positive evidence. I did my like a 25 minute video that was actually 45 minutes. I just cut. So I, I tried to not make it so long, but I put I put like four day, four four full days into that. And so um and so those I won't reiterate the whole video, but I people that want to watch that, I mean, I I give like really like ten really solid pieces of evidence. I kind of go through, um, and 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 one of the things that's important to mention is that ISRO doesn't have a track record of deception. So that's kind of another thing too. It's like, what is there's not really um, a, a motivation for them to be be deceiving, and they're and they're not NASA either, right? So um, so it's like, well, yeah. they don't even have a track. So it's like in a court of law, you know, it's like I think. The status quo where there would be a strong case there but then of course i i gave all the pieces of evidence like we have um you know ten thousand people were there on site to witness the launch yeah a rocket nobody, really nobody, went up oh, yeah when it went up nobody saw it going to the ocean like flat earth was like to say that oh because they don't understand how how you know yeah, the perspective of the launch and yeah. the curvature of the earth works right they just think it's going into the ocean yeah um, so flat nobody earthers saw that right to to to, to do it to to Right here. Yeah. I got, I got and, the card. Me, I got the card, yeah. the Berta proof card. Flat earthers, if you're gonna claim that the the rocket that brought Vikram up went into the ocean, you have the burden of proof to present the evidence for it going into the ocean. Not right. just not something that matches orbit of Earth, because that's what that's what the big arc looks like, orbit yep. of Earth, right? Yep. So Maybe, maybe you think that that is a, it doesn't match the globe orbit. Yeah. Well then show the analysis where you think that the position of it didn't match the globe, but yeah. lacking that you don't get to just say it went into the ocean. Oh, you, <laughs> it didn't go. You provide <laughs> video or footage of somebody saying we saw it. Yeah. Right? And it's not the Bermuda Triangle in this case, like they try to say with Cape yeah. Canaveral, right? It's a, it's, <laughs> it's a bit far from the Bermuda Triangle. The Bermuda there. Triangle. That's so, where they all go, right? Um, I want to. I want to. So, so there's a, there's a flatty uh, flap in his face in the uh, the okay. chat here. Oh, Derek, okay. see. Derek Powell, is that his name? Derek Powell. Um, yeah. Hold on. I, I just want to make sure I get his name right. Uh, there, Derek Bradley. Derek Bradley. Derek Bradley, um, big talk there, buddy. Tell you what, Derek, how about you and me debate Derek Bradley? And we're going to do it on Jaron's show. He's going to be the moderator. He's going to be the host. You yep. email me, mctoon at mctoon.net, or you can find me on Facebook, Michael Toon, and uh, we'll set it up. Uh, but if you don't want to do that, then you, you just, you're just a coward. Have have a, right. a flat earther as the moderator. Yeah, no, that we'll see how that. I wouldn't hold your breath on that one, probably. Yeah. Um, that they're so and, bold uh, until it's time to sack up. <laughs> but but the next this will lead into the next couple little clips here is that there is a lot of that that you'll see. I, I put a we'll, we can maybe drop the link somewhere below in the description or something. But to go to the ISRO to see all those images and to look at the videos. To me, that's really good evidence because they did take a lot of pictures and you can cry about it's not the quality that's up to flat earth standards and it's not 24 seven HD coverage of the launch, which is the, which is what Eric, Eric Dubay wanted. He thinks that we should be able to give 24 seven coverage of the entire launch all the way to the moon. 
You know, it's like that's but, his criteria. That's what he yeah, thinks. Yeah, it, it's it's this it's the third law of flurf. Yeah, you, you know, oh, uh, the, I'll I'll bring that law? up. Uh, the third law is that uh, oh, the third law of flurf is flurfs are pseudoscientists when evaluating flat Earth, and science deniers when evaluating globe evidence. So oh, I see. a science denier has exceedingly high demands for the evidence they will accept. So they set these <laughs> they set this ev this level. Oh yeah, it's, high, yeah. so high knowing that that it, you know, nobody would ever do that while simultaneously yeah. having a ridiculously low standard of evidence for themselves. Yeah. Right? It, so it, they will right. accept that the earth is flat without any evidence. Yeah. <laughs> right? They will they will just blindly say that gravity the you know, they'll make claims about gravity with nothing backing it, with no actual, you know, empirical evidence supporting their alternative. Yeah. So that right. that's it. That's the third law in action there. But I want to say something here. Derek, Derek Bradley has chosen a coward's live debate defense. Uh, he he <laughs> said, "Pay me, and I'll do it." And as it has, as it happens. I have already identified that as a coward's live debate defense uh, right there. Number six, pay me. Why would anyone want to pay you to participate, Derek Bradley? Are you able to demand money for appearances on this topic? Did you accomplish something giving you major notoriety? Uh, did, you, did you accomplish, let's see, or are you a small fish in a smaller pond? The coward knows there is no value in paying them, so nobody would pay them. Easy right. escape. Yeah, that's well said. Yeah, there it is. And um, so yeah, the, it's like almost like the flat earthers are expecting like there to be like a, a camera crew like on the south pole of the moon, like waiting to film it in high definition with a five G tower to transmit it back to yeah. Earth. Yeah, and, and and just to be <laughs> sure that that camera is actually there, they want a camera filming that camera. Yeah. And they need and they need to have <laughs> right. right and and they need to have had that camera that's filming the camera um record the landing from a third camera of, sorry we're up to a fifth camera now. Yeah. A fifth yeah. camera watching it from the side on a giant arm that's that's 50 meters long so that yeah. they can see it landing and it has to be done like you said <laughs> in, in 4K <laughs> from from the ground so that same camera uninterrupted yeah. Yeah. on the arm sticking out of the side of the rocket yeah. and then yeah. when they're doing all their staging and opening the fairings the same camera st yeah. sitting there the whole time yeah. has to be this uncut yeah and 300,000 miles away is easy to get a signal and you know nasa deep space they can just get that high definition just like that right but anyway but so yeah that's just kind of humorous their demand they're kind of their standards of what they think should be proof it's like that's they have such a lofty standard that it, it, and if we get to that standard, they'll make it higher, right? They'll, it just it won't be good yeah, enough. Well, it's, it's the goalpost move then. Aaron yeah. Reese, uh, Aaron Reese has a good question. Would you ever set a stream up to go to a debater's chosen charity in order to get them on? <laughs> well, it, it, if to get their charity, I don't know. Probably not. Like, like I'd love to to uh, to you know have a have a crack at dubay but he's too scared um w would i do it for charity yes i would do it for charity for his chosen charity probably not uh, maybe we could do a 50 50 on that so so let's see what was next here um like, are we number to, number six right now? Number six. We're up to number six. Yeah, I just yeah. wanted to get into it because he d kind of does this little re reverse challenge to me. Like, um, it's just kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, Bryant, I captured the Indian lander orbiting the moon with my P-1000. Can you prove this is fake? And then... <laughs> and just... <play. laughs> and, and just play video seven because um, I just kind of... It's All just right, kind of silent. The sound... There's the there's his his claimed video of the P one thousand filming the lander from, so, all right, yeah. And so then like, then we're on to number seven here where yeah, it's, play seven because that's kind of the answer to that. So I, I, okay. it's a start. I might do a little bit more on this because yeah. I didn't do detailed photo forensics yet. But yeah, um, and and so dearth, 
this is what you should do to the the lander footage from from ISRO. Mm -hmm. Uh so oh, is there no sound on this one? Yeah, that, that my somehow that didn't come through, and I was a okay. little running running the case, late. So the case of Nikon P one thousand. Um, <clears throat> there, the second paragraph. Therefore, for the P one thousand to be able to capture a clear five hundred pixels image of an object on the lunar surface, the thing needs to be eight hundred five kilometers wide, or about half the lunar radius. The P Nikon Nikon P one thousand is not a magical device. Flat Earthers purport it to be. At best, it's comparable to the lowest end class of astronomy telescopes. You will not be able to resolve Apollo lunar landers on the surface, just like any Earth-based telescope, and even the best yeah. of them. The fact that it cannot see those landers is not proof of the landers are not there. Right. And so that's in a, that's not that that's a separate thing where you you got this on. Well, it's a separate thing, but but the Chandrayaan three. When you look at the, the the lunar the the Vikram was dropped. I mean, it never got above like eighty miles above the lunar surface. So it, it's almost it's so close relative to the distance of the moon that you can almost treat it like it's on the moon in a sense, just within an error margin, right? So just for the same reason that we can't see the the Apollo. I mean, heck, heck, even with the the lunar orbiters, it's hard to you can see the you can see the landing sites with lunar orbiters, right? Yeah. But it's not like it, it it's from a distance. It's still small. So there's with the P1000, there is just no way you'll probably even get one little pixel of, any, if anything. I mean, you're not going to get anything. Yeah, it's it, that small. Oh, and it, the Vikram is two meters by two and a half meters by one point two meters. So it is not a very big lander. On top of that, two and a half meters, that's the height. That's just you know what is that? That's um, seven and a half feet or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so so you know fully zoomed in, the the lander. So the the entire rocket you know, at, at the yeah. moon would be with, within one pixel on, yeah. on the uh, thing. And that, um, and even if the pixel, even if there were more pixels, it wouldn't solve the problem. And that gets mm -hmm. down to it. That gets down to the actual application of the Riley criterion that, that yeah, no flat earther does. can ever do. And that's where yeah. this 800, uh, 805 kilometer, right? So here at the top part, um, applying, let's see, oh, this is applying Dawes limit, which I, I'm not f as familiar with. And by well, not it, as, it, I mean not at all. Um, hold on. We can determine the maximum resolving power R equals 11.6 over 6.7 centimeter equals 1.73 arc seconds. We want to capture a sharp 500 pixel image. Object needs to have an ang that angular size. Factor of the two is the Nyquist sampling rate. The object has an angular size of 0.12 degrees. Then at the moon's distance, it has a size of uh, 805 kilometers. Yeah. So there you go. I think my guess is that's probably a a different way of coming at the same thing with the real. No, it's period. a different way. But but I, I didn't get have the time to really do the calculations with the way I know you kind of mentioned to me. I, yeah. I kind of know how to do it, but it's just a matter of getting all the specs. But but certainly there's no way that that camera. But even but I did actually do an error level analysis on it and it didn't it was pretty it was kind of fishy like it did even of course we know it's fake right but 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 Dirt is like well can you prove this is fake so um, I mean I can probably provide evidence you know so I'm trying to provide provide evidence for him because it's like a little challenge to me right so when I put it through the the second part is it the second part of that video um, I kind of just showed my little ELA tests on both both the, um, the Chandrayaan image and his little challenge like image, right? It's like, can you prove that this is fake, Brian? And it's like, well, yeah, I think I can, yeah. besides the whole P1000 argument, I mean, you put it through photo forensics and it's fishy. You can see the, it's not, the air level analysis is not consistent. You can yeah. see the cutout of that of that craft where with the Chandrayaan lander, it's a very consistent um, air level analysis, which is a good indication of that it's, again, it's a piece of evidence, it's not proof. Yeah. But it's a good piece of evidence that that's a real photo and the one that Durth sent me is not. So it's yeah. like, yeah, actually, Durth, I can kind of do some things to show that that's probably not a real image. Um, so challenge accepted. And I'll probably do a few more just because I probably will do a rebuttal to this video. Yeah. So, so yeah, so two parts. One, it's too small. The angular size is too small for the P1000 to capt capture. Yeah, yeah. Number two, the actual photo forensics uh, it doesn't, doesn't, uh, yeah, it doesn't pass. Which it makes sense, right? Cause he's, 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 they're, they're kind of Photoshopping that in. So it's pretty, 
obvious that the photo forensics would kind of pick that up with different. There's no, there's more things you can. Oh, what I didn't show is you can take the high magnifier little thing on on forensically, and you look around the edges and you can see that it's like kind of something's like put in. It's like something's oh. really fishy, and it's not like it's not just um artifacts from JPEG. It's a different type of like little like it's just cut out and put in there type of thing. Um, so I mean, there's just lots of little tests like that. So so again, no flat earthers even attempted to take the actual images off of ISRO and do a photo forensics. I mean, even their bad version of photo forensics. I mean, because usually when they try to do that, I can you can expose it by showing that's a low resolution well, JPEG. Yeah, they they always go. You know, they'll go to the website. They'll get the low res JPEG. They'll bring it into yeah. a, a, an application and just turn up the contrast and say, "Oh, look, turn there's the contrast, yeah. there's it's there's like jaggedy thing, yeah. edges." Yeah, you yeah. found JPEG compression. Wow. Yeah. And, and that's so easy to, I'm waiting for that because I know I, it's so easy to debunk because then I get the high resolution. I put it to affinity. I have affinity, right? Affinity lets you really turn the exposure up. And I did that when I debunked Eric Dubay because I showed that with the high res image of Artemis, you did not see those artifacts. And I put that in a little YouTube short to show, to debunk our, um, De, uh, Eric Dubay's attempt to debunk, right? To show that he was clearly using um, a JPEG compressed file. Yeah. Anyway, so... so E easy to do thanks dearth we that's how you're yeah, that's the easy way to do it yeah give it a shot you've got a lot of debunking to do a lot of analysis yeah. to do and and you you need to show yeah you gotta <laughs> what and, I mean, and, and, and that's and not even <laughs> that, none of the thing is of course none of them are even understand the technology enough right they don't yeah. even know to to not use a jpeg a low res jpeg yeah right that they, they yeah. go get the highest res uh available from the source yeah, yeah. use that no yeah. you can't do that yeah i mean just recently patrick tamponi who's a, a friend that really got me into this whole flat earth thing because we had so many mutual friends he just posted a an apollo picture showing the artifacts and i then uploaded the one that was high res and showed look no artifacts yeah. so i just turned the exposure up it's so and, and i got several likes on it because it's like you look at it it's like Ah, obviously this is a high resolution and there are no artifacts when you actually go to get the .tiff files, right? And you yeah. and you put those in affinity, turn up the contrast. You're not using, there are artifacts, but the artifacts, you got to go, you got to zoom really far, far in, right? To start to get to those pixelated little artifacts, but nothing like the JPEG. They're just so much smoother. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, the images aren't even the, some of the best evidence, in my opinion, that, are, that, that the Chandrayaan, that Vikram landed. To me, the best evidence is from the amateur astronomers, um, you know, like Scott Tilley. Astronomy Live pointed this out to me. And uh, they actually tracked, you know, and this was like a little pixel with a, with a really big, just showing the whole P1000 thing. They, were, they tracked where the, the Chandrayaan would be based on the data that given by um, ISRO, right? Which is with the help of um, JPL um, Horizons, you can kind of get the, the you know the software to kind of track this, and they were able to lock in on the Chandrayaan just as Astronomy Live did with Artemis, and um, and then Scott Tilley um, and others, not just him, but I found some others, were able to pick up the the known published transmission signals coming from Vikram, and so there's there were two megahertz transmitters, and amateur um, astronomers and people that know how to pick these up. Could actually pick up those exact um, uh, uh, frequencies, and they can do a Doppler curve, um, which is to me the best evidence. In fact, Scott Tilley on his on his on his um, Twitter account says, "Here's proof that Vikram landed," and he used the word "proof" because it's it's a very strong word. But when you look at understand how the Doppler data works, if the Vikram is transmitting a signal on the Moon, and the Doppler data of the Moon matches the Doppler data of the transmitting transmitting signal. There's no coincidence that those are going to be just happen to be the same. It's it's on the moon traveling, and it's based on what the um the the um the range the range rate it's called, right? So the Doppler, you got to figure out the relative velocity between your location and the the moon, or basically the Vikram on the moon, and the the Doppler comes from the radial component of that. That's called the range rate, and so you can do you can use the Doppler equations to calculate the Doppler shift. And so what Scott did was he found that his signal with his Doppler data perfectly matched the moon's Doppler data coming right from the JPL horizon site, which is the accurate, you know, motion of the, all the, they got all the different, you know, planets and everything kind of very well mapped out with all the trajectory data and stuff. Right. 
And when I, when I, I took a while to kind of for me to grasp that. And I asked Astronomy Live a couple of times to help me understand it better. But then once I got it, it's like, oh my gosh, this is like, I mean, maybe not proof is the word to use, but it's very strong evidence that the signal that Scott was picking up is coming from, and, and again, the, the moon's not just going to be transmitting this specific uh, megahertz frequency, radio frequency, right? Why would it? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, two, actually how, two frequencies that were How is by- that? Yeah. yeah. How is that happening? How would that have been faked? And of course, the the flat earthers, right? They're going to they're going to say yeah. nah uh to that, right? Well, they're hold on a nuh-uh. second. You okay, yeah, you yeah. you if you want to 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 show that, you know, cuz they're going to claim that Tilly is lying, yeah. right? That's what they're going to yeah. have to say. That's what they're going to do, yeah. Well, you don't just get to claim he's lying. You have the burden of proof to show it. So you would need to do something, maybe get your own, you know, receiver, point uh, it at the same location, just froze here. and and see if there's any data coming. I hey, still did. Did I freeze? Me? Yeah, I do. You, did you I froze freeze on too? my screen? Oh, I think it's on your side. I'm I'm uh, I'm still good, and I'm streaming out at the same rate. Oh, okay. Maybe it is on my side. Um, but yeah, um, but but Scott did on his website, he's got actually schematics on how you can do it yourself. He said, this is not just me asking you to, bl-. Some, someone objected to me like, he's like, listen, here's my blog post on my website, on my, my site. Here's how you can buy this equipment and see for yourself. Because you can do this, but it's not an easy setup, of course, but it's like, He's got the schematics there for those that are maybe willing to maybe hire someone or get someone that's of the technical knowledge to do that. They can see for themselves with the right equipment. And that's what Scott was trying to say. This is something that you don't yeah. have to bleed me blindly. You can do this experiment and see for yourself, just like just like Jaron did with ISS, but but he was not liking what he was seeing because <laughs> it was there in the shape that it was supposed to be there. Um so that's why flat earthers won't do it, right? Even if they could find someone that could do it, they, they don't want to. They don't want to see that. It's not going to give them the results they're looking for. So they're probably yeah. It, it's interesting, right? It it, just, it shows the dishonesty to claim fake yeah. or claim that somebody is a liar just because it contradicts your preselected conclusion. That's not yeah. that's not being honest. That's not yeah. being uh, a truther. That's not being. Um, um, forgot that i was gonna say another what was it i was thinking of um (laughs) i forgot anyway that you know oh uh, a skeptic that's not being a skeptic yeah yeah, yeah. right you're not a skeptic by blanket denying it right so if you want to be a skeptic (laughs) you need to test it somehow and find that it's wrong so so he gave the schematic well a truther a skeptic uh would would say well I'm going to show you wrong. I'm going to build the same thing and I'm going to do it. And I'm yeah. gonna, well, no, they didn't do that. You have to mm-hmm. do something. Yeah. And just like Himawari, you can, you can get a satellite and you can actually download the Himawari images directly from the satellite. Right. And there was what videos online that show you how to do that. And, and when I first yeah. talked about that in one of my videos on Globebusters, they were like, Oh, you can do that. Why didn't Jaren's like, Oh, why didn't they tell us that you can really, he was like skeptical. He didn't think that you could. It's like, He's like, really? They can you can do that? And they were like, it was so funny to watch them to kind of just fumble over the, this thing. And yeah, and they were like wanting to try to prove it wrong, right? And they 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 went back and found some of the older stuff, and it was just this jumbled mess of a of a of a kind of rebuttal that didn't make any sense, right? But no, you can if you point the, right at the you know him you know Himawari or the Go sixteen seventeen, you can download the data directly. So it's like it's like there are these type of tests where you, if, even if you don't believe if you think that the noaa is you know, the, 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 what, it was part of nasa and that's all a scam it's like but you can download the images yourself you don't have to like just believe their website yeah there, there's so, a um somebody sent me a video of a guy who got the uh, a, a newly launched russian weather satellite oh and and he got he figured out when it was passing over and he got the the, the transmission from it and he actually yeah. got a partial because he you know it's not aimed yeah. at him and there's you know there's yeah. some challenges but he got it he got a picture of the of the earth from yeah. from that satellite yeah. on his screen like you could test that flat earthers yeah 
Well, that, that and these, what these would you do. say? What would yeah. you say if you did test that and got an actual, like, there it is. There's the earth <laughs> where you're at right now. What would you say to them? Yeah. Well, of course, they would not want that result. No, they wouldn't. And that's what they do with the GOES-16 experiment is they actually accidentally pointed at GOES-17 when it was inactive first by accident. And they're wondering, why aren't we getting any transmission? We're getting some, but they didn't realize oh. like, oh, we're pointing it at, so the they have, you have to point it very precisely, right? So you're you're pointing it right in the sky where it's supposed to be, where, you know, I mean, you can see it. Like, I think um, Wolfie6020 did something with the, the set where he had the nice images of those satellites overhead. And it's like, you can point right up there and download those download those images um that's true i actually think most of them not just um but anyway yeah so so plenty of ways that they could they could find they could do some of these tests to show that this is fake right there's like yeah. there's a lot of things they could do but they haven't done anything except just this one this to me the chandrayaan is just so laughable all like just all cry and fake that's just all it is yeah <laughs> um so you know what is the well, what's the saying that I say a lot about flat earthers? You got a lot of flurf. Got a lot of flurf, and yeah. Dearth goes on these shows, and he talks on multiple topics on the shows, and it's you know he kind of has yeah. a, a deck of the same things that he goes over yeah. each time. It's pretty similar. So I have actually when he was on I, this is a, an aside just when yeah. he was on with. Um, I don't know. I forgot who he was on with. And I and I, I emailed the guy or I mess I tw tweeted to him to the guy that was ho that hosted it. I said, mm -hmm. "Hey, you had dearth on. How about you have an alternative?" He's like, "Sure." So I watched the video. Um and I went point by point with to to dearth's claims there. This is dearth's entire video. These are point by point all of his claims mm. so if anybody's interested I'll put that it's right it's like right at the top of my website um but but since you got a light of flurf there's and dearth is talking on multiple topics for an hour or two he's he puts out a lot of lies and so yeah. i was i was i had been watching several and taking some notes and saying oh i can do this i can do this i can do like do, like do these short yeah. kind of things on addressing different lies in video form you know basically these yeah. things in video form and then i i i'm like i'm planning this out and i go on tiktok and i see globy mcglobe face love yeah. him he's awesome if you're on t if you if you're not if you're on tiktok and you're not subscribed to globe and mcglobe face and globe man and julius dedekind and uh um be dazzle shame on you and there's a bunch more um but globy had done already very similar things and just a short thing here is dearth lying about something here's the reality mm -hmm. that's it and so yeah. i messaged him i said all right we need to we need to overlap these things and collaborate yeah. so we're gonna we're gonna be doing hopefully some some things between myself and globy mcglobe face on just each point of dearth's lies <coughs> yeah so. it's something i've been thinking about just this week too it's like i want because just seeing ftfe kind of do it with one of his presentations although we kind of dragged out for over four videos but still yeah, yeah. I, I i did something maybe a little more like like that but more like because Saint, um, and I think that's a good because he's got the same talking points he goes over and over again, um, and it's the stuff that I mean I, that I thought was debunked the smithereens, but, um, but he still keeps going on with it, like the whole electroaerodynamic thrusting with MIT. I mean, I told him to his face during our first debate exactly what that is, and yeah. he he just stopped for a moment and he couldn't believe I had that explanation, and he said, "Let's let's move on." Yeah, he and, didn't think it, yeah. <laughs> and he's not going to stop the lies because yeah. the, he intentionally chooses places that yeah. are not going to have any idea what he's talking about yeah. and won't be able to address him. And so, and he can just go shotgun down the yeah. whole list. That's what he does. And yeah. everybody that, that he's on with is like, oh, I didn't know that. I don't know that. Yeah. I don't yeah. know that. He won't talk to me. Yeah. He, and he would not, he, think, he would not be he wise did. to talk to you again. Because you're well, ready. I, asked him, I told him I would debate him one-on-one. -on -one. In my last email to him, it's like, let's debate one-on-one -on, -one on a neutral platform. And it's like, um, I challenged him. And he, 
I actually have challenged him now in three of those emails with uh, we've gone back and forth. And he just ignores that. He doesn't even address that. Yeah. I mean, at least at least Jaron said, well, I don't want to give you the 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 spotlight again. So that was because I challenged Jaron to a debate too. And he he that was his excuse. He doesn't want to give me the spotlight. Yeah. So um which is just a way of because uh, I'd love to debate Jaron or or Dirth. I mean, yeah. Um <clears throat> the Dirth, oh, he he got burned. And who did he get burned by? That guy. <laughs> right there. Right there. I've this is up to uh your clip of <laughs> Are you oh, right. ready for the clip? Oh, right. oh, well, I, oh, well, I wanted before we. Not yet? Yeah, okay. I wanted to try to preface this before there's, we. Um, there's the tease. Okay, go ahead. There's a te so the yeah so there were, there were some really good tests that took place during this mission the the Vikram lander so they had like five main objectives one of them was surface temperature and they found that the the moon surface is a poor conductor in fact within just like just a couple inches you're going from like a sixty degree drop in temperature very quickly so that was interesting I was kind of. Um, they did, and then they did um, a seismic test with a seismic, you know, uh, seismic activity around the lander. Um, they tested the plasma kind of whatever the, the, the plasma conductivity of the surface, which is important for communication. So, and they yeah. found it was a, a low level because it was low. That's good news for communications, right? And then the rover, the rover did a test with two, not one, but two forms of spectroscopy without a container. So they used a, a high power laser induced spectroscopy. And then they had X-ray spectroscopy as like a backup confirmation. And they were looking for, like hydrogen was one of the things they were looking for, for fuel purposes. But they did find a surprising result with sulfur. There was a little higher amounts of sulfur than they expected. But all the other elements were kind of, uh, so they had some really good tests uh, lined up. So um, let's, let's play this next clip here and see um, uh, what Dirth might have to say about doing spectroscopy um, like that. Spectroscopy needs to be in a container otherwise you don't spectroscopy know spectroscopy needs to be in a container the study of how light interacts with matter needs to be in a container uh, you have daylight wait wait daylight. wait turn it off wait turn it off turn let it me off. ask a question no, but you, oh, have, you have wait, wait, wait. the wrong button okay. yeah I did. no um so <laughs> you know what dave when he got met in his, in his email to me what he said he said brian you know that i meant that gas needs a container i'm like no, actually, um, Professor Dave asked you point blank, do you know what spectroscopy is? So where are you pulling this? You know that I meant that I meant gas needs a container. It's like, that doesn't even, that's not even what Professor Dave asked you. He literally says this to me. He's, he's, like, he's triggered because I put these two clips. The next one we'll go through in a minute because there was one last test that they did from the lunar surface. They found that the, that daylight on the moon actually does come from the sun. Let's play this clip and see All right. if Dirt might be surprised. G-Man, just a second. G-Man yeah, yeah. says, show some balls to bait Witsit. I have several times. He won't talk to me anymore. All right, this this one, uh, here we go. This is one of my favorite my favorite reels, my favorite Dirt reels. You have daylight. Daylight is the illumination of the sky. It's not the sun. From and the sun. No, the sun is- You're saying that daylight is not from the sun? Absolutely. Let but, me ask you a question. <laughs> you, you know what an idiot he's such an idiot he, and, he, and that's what i'm saying when he got triggered by that too because he, he didn't address listen he didn't address anything in my video except that i put those two clips in and he says brian you know that i didn't mean that daylight i'm like dave he, he clarified I, I listened it. to you because if it kept going professor dave made it clear that the, the the part you know that the that the, the atmosphere is you know is is um is kind of um scattering the light yeah and it's like and you still said that that it was not sunlight that's that's getting scattered so it doesn't even if even if we played that longer you're still denying this that that daylight comes from the sun and and he doubled down right he he said absolutely it wasn't just I think so no it's like no absolutely it doesn't. Oh. Because he thinks like the dome gets illuminated or something, right? It's like the dome is getting, they don't know what the sun is. They don't know where it is, whether it's inside or outside the dome. But somehow the 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 the, um, the dome is what's illuminating the sky, right? So, of course, he denies really scattering. Yeah. And Unless you go up higher, then for some reason, when you get up to high elevation, the sky gets dark, even during the daytime. Why is that? <laughs> like you didn't right. pass the dome, did you? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> 
Oh man. Uh, all right. Well, yeah. I don't know if we need to play some of the other ones. I I just included some of the, my favorite birth reels. Not um because the the next one is not even related to this, but it's just so funny. I oh, mean, I what it, it, it's it, enjoying a chuckle is. If is you enjoyed a chuckle, it. this is this is one of my favorites. Um, uh, um, as well. Uh, Let me ask you guys: yeah, can, you, you can you can you point west right now? Well, if I had a again, we can get a compass and do a test. We you don't can't have point exactly. west. West is a is right where you are. Anything past that is south. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Absolute idiot. West is right where you are. Anything past is south. <laughs> that's one of my all-time favorites because that's the most nonsensical <laughs> statement. That makes no sense. <laughs> that makes no sense at all. He's so dumb. Oh, he's so dumb. <laughs> oh, he's just such an idiot. So, I mean, oh. and Pete, the reason I put these things on my channel it's like if people are following dirt it's like look at this look at the things he's saying why why are you believing this guy he says the most, the most nonsensical things that make no sense and you're somehow believing his like like his bullet like he, like you say he kind of rattles through all of his points so nobody yeah. can interrupt him right yeah it's almost like he's pre preaching the gospel right his dearth gospel and he no and he doesn't like it when you interrupt him and try to question it no like like well, he doesn't like it when you ask can you give evidence for that? Like, I mean, he would he would do terrible um, if Witsit was in the room because Witsit would instantly claim something like this. The person making yeah. a positive claim has the burden of proof, right? Because because Dearth makes so many positive claims. So then so then Austin would say, "Now you have gotten to where you were just basically diverting the the burden of proof. You're shifting the burden of proof." Well, oh, right. That's what Dearth did to me. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> like Dearth, Dearth, you say you say that the. Uh, the photographs from the India moon mission are fake. You make a positive claim of specificity, you have the burden of proof of specificity. There you go. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Austin. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I appreciate that. <laughs> oh, it's just too funny. Um, but it does seem that Dirth now has the most influence of any flat earther now. It seems like when you look at his subscribers, he's out subscribing Dubai. When you look at all his three channels together, even though he might have some duplicate subscribers on those channels, but. Well, um, yeah, but, th that's the thing. Earth, There's, I, I don't think you can just sum the uh, the. Uh, but the flat Earth base. app, but his flat Earth app is what puts it kind of over the top, though, right? Because he's got so many. How, does anybody know how many? I'm, I've been curious, like how many people have downloaded that app? That's like three dollars per download. Yeah, I'm, and, I'm well, and of course that's what he he does, right? There, yeah. there is no more grifter in flat Earth than Dearth. Um, right. He goes on all of these shows and he has the mm -hmm. same MO every time. Yep. He does his talk. Yep. He taught he's constantly promoting his app. Constantly. Yep. Right? So anybody that, that does it will get three bucks, right? Yeah. And then to seal the deal at the end of it, to really get that that to finish the sales presentation. Right? Yeah. What did he what what did he do before this? What was his job? He, didn't he install solar panels or something? He I know sold solar panels. Oh, right. That's a hard sell. He was a hard sell salesman. Yeah, okay. So if you've studied uh, the hard sell, yeah. study the hard sell, that's what he did. That's <sighs> what he's doing with this. So he goes, he gets to the end of his deal. He's like, if after this, you don't believe me and you still think yeah. that the earth is a globe, so then so, you download what's the what's the process? Download his app. Yep. Cha ching. Yep. Watch a video every day for 30 days. Yep, his channel. Yeah, watch my like two right. it's like a getting started like thing. Yeah. And then contact him with the proof that the earth is a globe. Now he does not ever give any criteria for what right. he will accept as this proof. Nothing. He gives no criteria. Right. Um, and he says, but he, and he dangles three bitcoins out there, which he does not have an escrow. He does not yep. have clear, objectively measurable criteria. Yep. He does not have any independent uh, judging. Should he yep. declare that that isn't proof that's to his satisfaction, which we don't know what his satisfaction is? Yep. Um, there's no third party to anyway. No, yeah, it's a, it's the second law of flurf, fake challenges. 
Yep. And I've shared your link. A few people have done the type of challenge. I've shared your link to that page on your website. Cause it's really, this is how challenges should be done. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's like, yeah. I mean, that certainly there could be other ways to do challenges, but yeah, I, 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 I set the bar for myself really high. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like, and, and, oh, yeah. and other Globers have done yeah. challenges. Yeah. And I'll, I'll tell them, put the money in escrow. I cannot back you if you're doing yeah. a challenge without money in escrow. Yeah. So, so I, I was just thinking about this the other day. It's like, um, Dirth is a former solar panel salesman. We have Mark Sargent. Is he still living with his mom? He does. Maybe. And he, yeah, he used to. What does to, he do? Like, what? he used to be a video game tester. So he, he, video played, game tester. he played video games and tested them at the behest of the, of the, uh, the, you know, the program yeah. you say well right at, at level three stage 18 you're gonna go here and we need to make sure that the the boss yeah. doesn't glitch so go run yeah. run through there 10 times <laughs> and make sure it doesn't glitch okay and then we have dubai who's like, got the yoga teacher credential but what else does he do this and of course he's just doing this now but i yeah, what, i don't what, what, know what, if he has any other did he have anything else that's kind of which that used to work at an airport knowledge. i know that he used to work at an airport yep. right yeah did and, he have any he, other at the airport, I think he was, I don't, I don't, he wasn't flying planes. He wasn't working yeah. on stuff. He was, yeah. he was just a grunt, right? He was, yeah. he was in his yeah. mid twenties. So, right. And then yeah. what about Jaren though? Like what was Jaren? Jaren like was, Jaren was, uh, previously was the manager for a, uh, convenience store. And then I think like a CVS moved in nearby and then oh, that convenience okay. store folded, which is what yeah. happens right there down the street. There was a Walgreens. CVS started building and before yeah. the CVS opened the Walgreens shot yeah. and said we've transferred all of our prescriptions over to CVS. So but like, that's probably Walgreens. the most imp impressive. Yeah. He's a man I think he has the most impressive resume then because he actually managed a convenience store store. But that's like the best of the flat earth big influencers, right? As a convenience store manager. <laughs> I mean, if, if do people just ponder well, and think what they're who they're listening to? It's like these handful of people with these ridiculously yeah. bad credentials. They're just thinking all of a sudden can overturn, you know, just whatever centuries and centuries of, of accumulated knowledge. It's like, it just kind of makes me laugh. Just thinking of their credentials and things that they've done. It's like, are you serious? Yeah. Are, are really people like who, who yeah, else is there? Any... I, don't, I don't like to play the credentials thing. I know not the credentials I, I game, but just, you got to just know where they're coming from though. Right. It's like, yeah. And, and what kind of background? Well, what what other there's a there's a couple other if we're gonna do it yeah. if we're gonna look yeah, at yeah. what they've done what yeah. what kind of it's it's like well what kind of background prepared them yeah, yeah, yeah. to yeah. to be the leaders in science right because they right. declare that <laughs> right. they know science better than all of science right um, so uh, Oakley was a worked at a uh, a, a uh, audio shop he was okay. the and apparently he did deliveries but so yeah. let, let me let me get get this. If you've spent any time in the high-end audio market, yeah. the audiophile market, they're yeah. like, oh, well, I have this quadruple braided uh, cable to go from the amplifier to the speaker, <laughs> and it has the, the better uh, capacitance that's balanced, and it has its active capacitance balance, and you can totally hear the difference. And it's only $450 per line it's a steal that's that's the market <laughs> yeah. that i think i don't know i have no idea where it actually that's funny that's funny that's the market i think he worked in right the people that will 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 pay money for the cable that the power cable that goes from the amplifier to the wall they'll pay a hundred dollars for that cable mm -hmm. because it will get better audio on the other side of the mm -hmm. of the bridge right. rectifier and the diodes and yeah. uh capacitors and everything on the power supply never mind the how many hundreds of feet from the wall outlet going through non non-controlled wires through right. the walls <laughs> next to all the other wires into right. the into the breaker right. panel none of that was good but that last six feet <laughs> that's gonna make the difference that's gonna make the difference right so yeah that's kind of um those are some. Those are pretty much the main top influencers, right? I mean, you have those TikTok guys too that seem to get a lot yeah, of. They're not. Yeah, they're, they're not, not really. Not. Um, there was Bob Nodell, and he 
he, yeah. he uh, what did he i don't know what he did for employment or income before before uh pre-flat earth he said that he was an electrical engineer he was definitely yeah. not an electrical yeah. <laughs> engineer he probably had some sort of e electronic background yeah. at best electronics en enthusiast he was yeah. an electronics enthusiast yeah. yes so and and you see this a lot with people claiming to be an electrical engineer or a mechanical engineer or a chemical engineer that don't actually know so when you say that you're an electrical engineer in the United States, it's different in other places. Yeah, yeah. Um, it it means that you have a, a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering. Yeah. At as the base. At least. Yeah. And and unless it's uncredited, an uncredited uh, school. Yeah. That you have at least a year of physics, at least a year of chemistry, calc-based yeah. physics, at least a year yeah. of chemistry, oh, yeah. a a year of calculus, at least another year of several other math topics, matrices, differential equations, oh, yeah. Um, yeah. things like that. All of those things are the foundation for a degree in engineering. But yeah. they don't know that. And so they they'll just say, oh, and they'll they'll blurt out their their that they yeah. have this this qualification when they don't yeah. and they don't yeah. know how easy it is for somebody that has gone through the education to totally see through it yeah so that's what's yeah i mean it just just think how and since 2014 how this has come as far as it has i mean and for pretty much since 300 bce before that the, the educated world has known the earth as a globe even during the ptolemy's time of being geocentric right i mean yeah. it's like this is the power of social media and these people with these i mean again i know it's not credentials but it's still good to know where they're coming from to have so, to be able to make the outrageous claims that they do to challenge all of science right and and someone like witsit like i remember with you and phd tony basically was you were saying well who's smarter than you witsit and he couldn't he couldn't even um come up with anybody two, except people that were dead two people two living people he he listed bob nodell who's no yeah. longer with us and wheeler ken wheeler oh ken wheeler who recently was kind of making fun of flat do you see that recently in flat earth he's kind of making fun of them a little oh, bit yeah he always does he he thinks they're okay. a joke so right. <laughs> so the one living person that wits it thinks is smarter than him thinks that flat earth is a joke no and i think planar walk did a video recently of that kind of him making fun of flat earth um, Daryl, I want to address Daryl Frost says, depending on on what engineering field and country. Yes. So like in in the, the UK, and I didn't know this when I first started and I, I talked to Chris F.E. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's been nearly five years, about four and a half years ago. Um, he's he, he's like somebody said he's an electrical engineer. He lives in England. I'm like, oh, so I started talking to him and I'm partway through. I'm like, wait a second. He doesn't sound at all like an electrical engineer. Well, <laughs> in in England, the title electrical engineer is sometimes applied to an uh, electrician, somebody that pulls wires. Oh, yeah. So, okay. And so it, that that's a little confusing. So, but when somebody is an American and says that they're an electrical engineer, I'm being very specific in this, Daryl, and I wasn't maybe specific enough. Um. So yeah. Yeah, especially those three uh, fields are the ones that are the most commonly yeah. thrown around electrical, mechanical, chemical engineers. If somebody in the United States claims to be one of those, I'm expecting that they have a degree in yeah. in what in that field from an accredited university. Mm -hmm. And that that included a full year of calculus, a full year of chem calc based physics, full year of chemistry yeah. and a full year of, of several other different math topics. Minimum. Yeah. 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 So yeah, you gotta be very suspicious when people say they're, especially if they're flat Earth. If they say credentials like that, you should be a little skeptical. Yeah, and but, uh, I went to school for it. I I won't claim that. Right, that's not what yeah. I do. That's on top of that. Yeah. It should be what you do. I write yeah. software. Yeah. So I wouldn't claim that. Well, you're yeah. right because even if, even if they don't have credentials, if if they if they're self-taught and they and they contribute something to the world that's significant, that would be an accomplishment, right, of some sort that would give them. But see, they don't really have anything like that either, though, right? Along with no credentials. What? Meaning, 
even if they don't have credentials, they could still be self-taught and make, maybe make a big contribution to the it, world in some way. Certainly. Some, it, yeah, yeah. And I don't, so I, I won't discredit being self-taught. Right. But, but it's like, they haven't done that either though. Do, you, do any of those have any really accomplishments that they can say that they've done besides just promote flat earth? Uh, I, how I about, mean, how about instead of accomplishments, understanding? Oh, right. With it makes it clear that he doesn't understand the topic when he's making claims about how yeah. you know, what he says causes the downward vector. Yeah. Yeah. Right. right. He, <laughs> he says he says there's the the vertical um, electrical electrostatic gradient yeah. in the air. Yeah. Totally missing that. Um, sorry, I got I got I got a, a wrath of calm thing in my ear. Hold on. <laughs> All right, <laughs> like you got it. Uh, um, uh, because because he doesn't even understand Coulomb's law. Coulomb's law: no. positive and negative attract, positive and tra positive repel, negative and negative repel. Um, and yeah. if something has no charge, there's no force. Yeah. So and he and and so and you asked him, and he said yeah. Coulomb's law when you talked to him. Yeah, that's he right. doesn't he, understand he, he, a a, a gradient. Let's just imagine for a second that being near a, a building doesn't doesn't neutralize it, doesn't ground everything. Yeah, yeah. Let's imagine that it it yeah. it's in here for yeah. just a second. Let's let's accept yeah, yeah. that zero, one hundred, two hundred yeah. volts, right? Yeah, plus plus. Well, anything that's negatively charged. Even the slightest negative charge would go yeah. this way, yep. in that field. Yeah, the slightest negative charge. Yeah, and things and things in a Faraday cage would hover. I mean, I mean, they just you know there'd be no. And he's like, did you did you isolate one hundred percent of it? So yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what, anything with the very slightest negative charge would go up. Not just hover, would go up. Yeah. If that was the case. You would never have a crane. No crane would ever be built. Yeah. You would just connect. You just put a little negative static electric charge on an object. Yeah. And it would float up to the top of the building. Yeah. I, I think some of our last, we did a live stream last year, and I did a whole bunch of videos on this. I mean, I thought we d demolished incoherent dielectric acceleration He's so bad. Still they don't even use it. that. Am I incorrect to say this? I have not really heard them refer to it as incoherent dielectric acceleration. They no, just kind of use like clips. Yeah, they don't use they, that term so much, but Dirth still talks about it. Dirth knows, uh, Dirth doesn't have a clue on this topic. No, he doesn't he, have a clue. He calls the the ground, the earth, a negative yeah. charge, and negative. he calls it a neutral charge, both yeah. interchangeably. Exactly. He doesn't yeah. know that there's a difference between neutral charge yeah. and negative charge. They both start yeah. with N, therefore they're the same. Yeah, and it's funny, I just did a little parody. I, I found a video of him, did that little balloon experiment. I was going through my old videos and I was like, oh, this is unlisted. And I look at the head and it was so funny. I was laughing at my own joke about like Nobel Prize, like gravity overturned with balloon experiments, Nobel Prize rumors. Um, and and he with the whole button thing, he he, he gets to, he, he mixes up the signs, right? He, he can't even get straight what's positive, what's negative. But then he doesn't realize that this is the same thing as rubbing your balloon against a sweater. You know, you're just it's just the van der Waals interaction. So he could have put that button near a wall and it would have been attracted to the wall. It's a dipole dipole interaction type of thing, right? So it's like he it's just so silly. And and he and he and he did teach this to the, the class we were I mean, looking at. And he still uses his electrodynamic aerodynamic thrust thing to say, oh, look at we can, can we can manipulate electrostatics to make things uh uh you know levitate or, or be attracted to the earth. And it's like, no, that electroaerodynamic thrust is based on ionic wind coming from the corona discharge that's pushing the air and it only works at low low levels you can't go very high with it and only yeah. for light things right it's not going to create enough thrust to, to lift people up in the air or anything so and he's still teaching that and he's still i, I saw him doing that during the class the whole mit thing he's still going on about it it's because nobody will challenge him because yeah. he knows his audience is not has never heard it before and won't yeah. know won't know how to address it yeah so, but yeah, I think um, they're, they're still, it's funny that they don't, they don't even acknowledge like one thing that they say was might've been incorrect and revise it. They just, he just keeps going on with the same script. 
um, even his whole fast speeds and slow rotations, which I did a whole video on, right? Yeah. He's still doing the ridiculous. He he just doesn't. He thinks it's rim velocity. He, did I tell you when we when we said we had a one on one one hour thing? I, I showed him so clearly how he was wrong there. He started shouting at me. Yeah. And I realized it's like I would have beat him in a debate one on one. In fact, I could have got him to start yelling at me. Um, I, I realized that. That this is why he wanted Witsit there. This is why he kind of tricked oh, yeah. me into getting Witsit there. Yeah. Yeah. Witsit, the math guy who's never done mm -hmm. math. Uh, Weiskopf and. Yeah, I'm I'm aware of this Weiskopf. Weiskopf says the argument is that density and buoyancy sort out the rest, but the electrostatics just set the primary downward bias. Oh. Yeah. So and and yeah. So it's it's important to directly address the claim. And so yes, yeah. once it has a two part. The first part is that electrostatics establishes the direction, yep. and that. Now I don't know if I've heard Witsit say density and buoyancy lately. He he says he mostly yeah. he's he says, well then you just use the kinematics formula. Kinematics yeah. is not does is just a measurement no. of what happens. It's not yeah. a cause. It's not to But, but let's let's ask Weiskopf this though. During a thunderstorm, Weiskopf, if it sets the bias in the direction arrow, which by the way, in physics there are no arrow only for I mean, there's always a magnitude and direction, not a there's no direction only force as Weiskopf. So that's one yeah. problem right there. So, but during a thunderstorm, it reverses polarity. So if you're in the vicinity and the little, you know, again, you can, yes, you can sometimes get little levitating little pieces of whatever because of the, they get all the charge, right? For a little, but you're not going to get with that kind of a, of a bias. If it is the same um, downward acceleration, things are going to turn around. And if whatever's pulling us down is going to push us up. In fact, the intensity we know, or the amplitude we know increases by a hundred fold along with the arrow going the other direction. Yeah. And this is this is happening. Like we're talking about like seven million lightning strikes a day. Well, it's it's not just oh, the yeah. lightning strike. It's in yeah, the vicinity the area, yeah, the area, of a right, storm. Yeah. yeah. So there is a, near there is a storm, reversal. it reverses. So then yeah. everything would go the other direction. And Witsit, Witsit, uh, Witsit in his is the derpy movie that that uh, that the level movie. He has mm -hmm. a little. He has um these two plates. And he's got a little piece of styrofoam or something in between them. And he connects up those two plates to a Van de Graaff generator. All right. Which generates a very high voltage. Yeah. Thousands, thousands of volts. But let's let's apply his specific claim. He's claiming that there's a hundred volts per meter. Yeah. Which is one volt per centimeter. Yep. electrostatic charge and that is what causes the downward bias right. just the here's, direction here's the... hold on hold, let me let me finish this in his in his thing he has he has these two plates that are about 10 centimeters apart yeah approximately and he connects it to a van de graaff generator where he puts thousands of volts on it and thousands of volts is what was necessary to get that lot, tiny little piece of styrofoam to go up to the to yeah. the top if it's if the direction is because of of the electrostatic field in there the all you would need to do in that 10 centimeters is get 11 volts not thousands 11 yeah the other right. direction and everything would go up not not just yeah. very like and with and with it loves to quote the, the richard Feynman chapter in atmospheric sciences and it's funny thing about it is in that chapter richard says that about about 30 kilometers or 50 kilometers it basically becomes zero because it's a very highly conductive layer yeah so that means the the the, the actually it's not 100 volts per meter it's only 100 volts per meter for the first you know several hundred meters and then it starts to go down very quickly and gravity doesn't go down you know one over r squared drop off you got to be a radius of the earth away to be at one quarter well remember he's only claiming it's the direction not the magnitude yeah, I know. yeah right true but but again, density and buoy buoyancy or kinematics neither explain the magnitude. But we've talked about density before. If things are less dense, I mean the, the atmosphere gets less dense as you go up. Things should be going up. I mean, with the density, right? I mean, kind of things going from less dense or more, you know. But yeah, so, so Weiskopf, um, he says the density and buoyancy are stronger than the electrostatic charge. The electrostatics are much weaker than the mass in the medium, I Wait, think, is a stance. I thought electrostatics was 10 to 36 times stronger than gravity ever claimed to be. In fact, I just yeah. heard Dirth talk about this in his recent talk. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he knows. He does the same kettle logic that Witsit did. Yeah. So, so again, buoyancy, 
just all you're doing is putting a word uh, substituting a word in and i don't think yeah. I, I don't think weisskopf is is holding this position i think he's just trying to explain austin's oh, I see, position yeah. and i do understand austin's position pretty well i think yeah, I, I understood I it pretty well that. too so yeah so buoyancy buoyancy is just a mask for gravity because that's gravity is within there so when we're asking what's the cause of the magnitude where's where's the magnitude of the downward acceleration yeah and, you, yeah. and density is is no vector and and it's is, is not a force and buoyancy is only up not down and yep. it is a result of whatever is the downward force. Yeah. So I'm to to come at it neutrally, not specifying what that downward force is. You don't get to claim buoyancy because buoyancy is just a result of whatever the downward force is that is in contention. Yeah. Well, buoyancy is minus rho v rho v g. So the gravitational accelerations are right in buoyancy. Um, but but didn't Weisskopf come around on the whole relativity thing? I thought he was he, like seeing he, through it for a while. I think he flops around quite a bit. Uh, Dale Frost is saying any voltage or potential difference is attraction. Um, but you got to remember, he's he's using a version of of uh, electrostatics that is not based on on uh, uh, a any reality. What's my book? Yeah. No, it's not. And plus, most things are neutrally charged anyway. The, yeah, for the most part. Hold on a second. I got my book yeah. right over here. Oh, no, not there. <laughs> Thought it was there. It's not. Yeah, I mean, it'd, be, it'd be fun yeah. to revisit the whole electrostatic thing. It's got rearranged again. a little bit in here. I, I, It'd be fun to do another like updated live stream on the whole electrostatics thing because they're still going on about dirt. It's got that. His, it's all well, part of his whole thing. Every time he talks, right? I've, he always, I've got, I've got some stuff in the works. I've got some stuff. To me, that's works. one of the easiest oh. things to debunk. I mean, to me, it's just almost, you know, I don't know how people can hear the debunks that are so clear and still like turn, turn, you know, turn, it's like put their head in the sand and say, oh, I didn't hear what you just said. Yeah. I mean, because uh, a Faraday cage alone debunks the whole electrostatic thing. I mean, it's just. Yeah. I mean, well, and the, and the Witsit, right Witsit did. Witsit debunked it. Yeah, Witsit debunked it. <laughs> because, because he only needed 10 volts or 11 volts because it oh, right. was just 10 meter, 10 centimeters apart. All he and everything inside, everything by his claim, yeah. everything inside has to go up because he reversed yeah. the field. Yeah. The field, right? He, he, it's, it's 10 volt, 10 plus 10 here, right? Yeah. He puts negative 11 here, then you're, you're, you have a net one negative yeah. here. And so then you've reversed the vector. Well, he put negative thousands at the top and only that little piece of styrofoam went up. So he completely yeah. disproved his claim in yeah. that video. I mean, I used to do an experiment when I taught physics when we go to electrostatics. I'd get a comb with my hair, and I'd just get some little styrofoam bits. I could get, I could make styrofoam levitate with my comb. Yeah. You don't need a whole Van der Graaff generator. I mean, it's not that hard. It's just induced dipole. I mean, um, yeah. but but the whole demonstration was, look, this is this is overcoming the force of gravity. So it, this little tiny comb, and it's because yes, electrostatics is ten and thirty six times stronger than gravity. But still, most things on the Earth are electrically neutral, more, more or less electrically yeah. neutral. So the the electrostatic force, electromagnetic force, does not play a role so much in most, you know, have you know. Yeah, well, and um, and it, and it's positive and negative. It's attractive and repulsive. Yeah, like plastic, right. attractive, repulsive. Yeah, so, all those so things. So there's a whole lot more than just saying it's more powerful, right? Because yeah. because by the same token, yeah, um, the the strong force is stronger. Than the electrostatic yeah. force yeah well, and then uh, why, why aren't you claiming it's just the strong force then and then you got to layer it too because ma mass does, masses that are electrically neutral it's just mass attracting mass now when you have electrically yeah. charged objects you have both mass and electrostatic force so you got to draw a free body diagram of both right yeah. if you've got different forces so they well, they're unaware that multiple forces can act simultaneously yeah. 
And then when you have the strong wow. nuclear force, now you've got both mass charge, now the color force. Now you've got three different things going on with the strong nuclear, like oh, in a nuclear. Don't get into quantum chromodynamics with them. Yeah, we can, if we get into that, then their heads will spin, yeah. Because <laughs> we can overcome that positive charge with, with so it gets like, how, that's where Witsit couldn't respond so, to me in the debate, right? It's and, like he could, well, and Witsit, have you seen him? He's He likes to claim that the strong force is electro is electrical yeah because at high energy levels the electrostatic or the the electric force and the strong force are combined yeah right but they're like no 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 that's no, not that's, that's, that's not that's how it works it's not that's early that's early universe what's yeah. that's when you know you, you're claiming big bang there what's it <laughs> i thought you did not claim that yeah uh, all right, let me read a couple things here from, and then do, do you have another one? Oh, yes, there is. We, we have to do that. Well, that's, we, that, oh, that's just the way an article. Oh, no. Yeah, we got a couple oh, more fun ones. So fun. All right. Uh, Tara Dick, Dickhoff said, my weekly tithe to the Temple of Tomb. Oh, I already had that. Um, Siggy Sigwald says, I made it. Another Tunes Day. And then gifted 50 memberships. Thank you, Siggy. Followed by another 666. Uh, Argentinian reals. Uh, let's see. All right. Oh, no, I already read that, too. Uh, Tuesdays are date nights. Okay, let me jump forward to... There it is. Randomly Epic said, Tell Bryant it's good to see him back. Hope everything is going well. Yeah, everything's going great. Making um, Just by getting to a rhythm now. I'm doing well again financially, so I've, I'm kind of... It's getting easier to make money, so I'm getting more free time, so it's kind of... I can kind of do this more often now, hopefully. That's the plan. Thanks. Uh, Mr. E-Man gifted five memberships. Thank you for that. Siggy says, uh, Siggy Sigwald for 666 reals says, Lake Titicaca <laughs> is fine, but have you heard of Aqua Hedia, Hedionda? Hedionda. Agua Hedionda. Stinky water in San Jose, Argentina. I have not heard of heard of that. I can't even pronounce it. It's called stinky water. That's funny. Uh, Green Bull says happy tunes, tunes ver, tunes face, tuniversary. Happy tuniversary. Whoa. Is it your tuniversary, Green Bull? Uh, Mark Beiser says do your own research equals look at all the memes. <laughs> so true uh yes. and tiktoks and videos you know and siggy gifted another 50 oh, thank you so much um to a hd cat diecast says check email later i will thank you for that i'll have a look um repo sandman this is on point says i hope connecticut schools dump dave weiss would be nice well he's not a teacher there this uh this little clip was from a um uh, summer school. The, a summer school thing where the teacher brought him in for some sessions. I might cover that you know, the time. At a, in a future a future thing here. Peachy Tony says, how many people have downloaded that app? A question based on the assumption flurfs are people. The person making the positive claim has the burden of proof. <laughs> 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 oh, that's funny. Um, Cretan Bull says, didn't that Cation guy claim to be an engineer? Yes. Trey Hutchinson, or Trey Cation, as I like to call him, claimed he was a mechanical engineer. And, and, and he's the perfect example of, of somebody just bl blatantly claiming a, a credential that they don't have, unaware that somebody that's familiar with the, the, you know, the credential could completely shake them out. And so he, to, to my knowledge, he, he worked as some sort of a, a welder or something like that. At a company that made uh, the big things that go on the the, the the frameworks that go on top of boats, boats mm -hmm. that pull water skiers and and waterboarders and stuff. That's what they made there at that place. And he was a guy that did those things. And I think that the title mechanical engineer was given to him by the company, which is not which is completely different from being an a, a mechanical engineer. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a title that your company your, your company can give you whatever title they want. It doesn't make you that. Uh, all right. 
String News 1 says electricians pull wire. EEs pull their hair out. <laughs> <clears throat> yep. And then Baux 1 says Brian's logic. So Brian's logic. Improvement on Brian's logic. Yes. That, oh my gosh. So get this, Bryant. Brian's logic is Didn't one of the... Didn't they get together? Something. Oh, they've had some... Yeah, they've butted heads a little bit. <clears throat> so, Brian had read something about the dip correction for celestial navigation oh, from, oh, 51, yeah. from 51 foot elevation. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and he read... Um, I don't know. It was a decimal. I think it was... 0 0.117 degrees and he read that as zero degrees 11 minutes seven seconds <laughs> totally yeah. oblivious that a decimal value of degrees needs to be converted into minutes and seconds missing that yeah yeah and when he first did that in the video i'm like oh well maybe he just misspoke he did it multiple times in the video oh no and then <laughs> in the comments the comments are filled with people saying that's not 11 minutes and seven seconds that's 0.117 don't quote me on the specific number i'm saying yeah, yeah. that from memory um um and and he never addressed he didn't address that he got that wrong. Like that's one of the things of the, the Oakley Clown Troop. Yeah. That they 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 could never admit to making a, a, even an honest mistake. Um another one, Flatzoid, in a in the comment section of a video, said that the um they're talking about a distant object and, and it measuring its height. With, yeah. with angles with angles right yeah and so when you're you're sitting there you've got your angle theta and you've got you know the base the height the the opposite yeah. your, so you're um adjacent your opposite and your hypotenuse right yeah and so he's he's saying the hypotenuse mm -hmm. is the measured angle <laughs> no oh man when, no it's not that'd be the angle is the measured angle not the hypotenuse yeah. um and then and then I said, well, look, maybe you misspoke, right? I, yeah. Just, just, just admit you misspoke. And he goes, no. He doubled down on he, it. He went tri double, triple, quadruple, whatever. He just kept going. Like, and, and, and then he's like, it's the, it's the, the hypotenuse, AKA the measured angle. Yeah. Like, Hold on a second. AKA. Now he's not. I don't think English is his first language, right? He's from South yeah. Africa. Um, AKA means also known as. Mm -hmm. right? So you're <laughs> equating the two things, basically. Right, yeah. Right? So hypotenuse, AKA measured angle. Like, no, no. It e even, oh. I could, oh. He wouldn't, he wouldn't go. Hmm. Um, he also missed. He also didn't during FTF, F, FTFE debate. Didn't he couldn't grasp what ma the density and mass were. He thought they were the same. Oh, and yeah. FTFE had to keep correcting him. He he wouldn't. He just could, he couldn't get it. He couldn't see what density was compared to mass. He couldn't see that they were different. It was the funniest thing. <laughs> oh, flat soy. <laughs> about a tune shine. Somebody mentioned we need more. Um, or or flat soy. I can't imagine being just that oblivious. <laughs> Jiffy Cone says, no, you cannot have my favorite Pixar movie. I'm never going to give you up. <laughs> never going to let you down. Never going to... Anyway. Then Jiffy Cone's gifted one <laughs> membership and said that gifted membership is my way of saying sorry for the Rick roll. And, uh... Who, who, let's see, did any, do we see who, no, it's not noted in here who got that, but well, thank you for that. Jiffy Cones. <clears throat> oh, there it is. Borg Emporia got the, got the membership, apparently. There it is. 
um, truth truth seeker peace out claim says that uh, he or she is a flat earther well you cannot be a flat earther and a truth seeker at the same time it's not possible you know that yeah it's impossible it's an oxymoron yeah, yeah. Um, blue marble science flat earther is making it easier to be the smartest guy in the room and then melodic lyrics is without flurfs there'd be nothing to laugh at now let's be honest Flat Earthers are amongst the bottom 0.0001% of human intelligence, but there are other people in that community, and they are also on the internet doing dumb things. Um, there, there's... So I painted, Bryant, I painted the basement. I'm not done. I have more to do. Yeah. And yeah. So, so what did I do? Well, I'm listening to videos, right? I'm not mm -hmm. watching them. I have to listen to them. So... I got on Irish Demons channel and I was watching a bunch of sovereign citizens, including my, my favorite. I like them when they're trying to tell the police how to do things, but my favorite is when they're in court. Because yeah. the because the judges definitely know what they're talking about. And and they just go on like, did you establish jurisdiction? Like, seriously? That has never worked. <laughs> right? That they're watching these videos and these videos are telling them how to get out of doing the uh, get out of being in trouble in court but it never right. works right <laughs> never <laughs> and and i was and i was watching this one it was a guy on zoom in a jail cell wearing the orange pajamas mm -hmm. handcuffed right this is yeah. this is where he's gotten himself he's handcuffed yeah. and he's talking sovereign citizen stuff i reserve all my rights I this yeah. blah blah i'm representing myself this this yeah. and it's probably for a 20 dollar misdemeanor but he's right. in prison now right right like how, yeah, how dumb that. well the... i knew some people that were into that i mean yeah i mean it's like yeah, good luck with that um oh tear tear <laughs> dickoff said did you see that guy that had a super long one he where he ran over 600 people at a parade is that guy uh, a sovereign citizen. Oh my gosh. Oh, all right. You have, you have some more. There's the tease. Well, we just had a, a couple more derp ones. These are just kind of not related to the moon landing. Just a, I, I just got such a kick out of this next one when I, I, I couldn't. I think I spit my co coffee out kind of proverbially when I saw it. All right. So was... here's here's your warning, people. Don't be drinking anything. <laughs> right. This is gonna shoot out super heated. Fire wind at thousands and thousands of degrees at thousands and thousands of miles per hour. This is a balloon. There's nobody on it ever, ever. There's nobody on it. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> fire I mean, wind. Fire wind. I mean, when I heard that, I'm like, that is. And then, of course, it's a balloon. It's like, how can people believe that a balloon could possibly be? Have it shooting out hot, like fire like that? When when the balloon melt? <laughs> well, why I mean, be... why is why do you have to invent that it's a balloon? I mean, these things they take off, they come yeah. back, they land again. Yeah. You can see them land. Yeah, yeah, right. They come. They're all covered in soot. Right? Yeah. Why why if you're gonna make up a lie about it, why yeah. not why not just make up something a little more plausible? Yeah. <laughs> Well, and, and he like tries to make it look like it's a balloon. There's like a couple little corners that were probably just the camera angle or something. It was not by any means even. It was it was such weak evidence. I mean, obviously it's it's silly anyway, right? But he just saw something kind of resembling a balloon in like one part of the photo, and then he's like, "Look, it's a balloon." It's like I'm like looking. It's like really, you're gonna go? That that's your proof there? Just from a? Did you actually go up there and knock you know knock on it and see that that was? It's like um. Well, and, so and of course it goes, it goes to the third law of flirt, right? Yeah. He will happily say that that's a balloon with absolutely zero evidence for it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. None, none. And he's completely, yeah. and he will tell other people pu pu publicly that yeah. it's a balloon. And there are photographs of the moon from the, the, uh, Indian lander <clears throat> and he'll just hand wave, say that's fake. Yeah. Why? That that's there's a lot more legitimacy 
to that than yeah. a balloon, a rocket being a balloon. And they really like their balloons. Like they think all satellites are balloons too, right? And it's like, okay, some satellites are, there are some. There satellites are, that yep, are there are balloons up there. Yep. But just saying that because there's some satellites are balloons, that for all satellites are balloons, is that like, isn't that like we learn logic in fifth grade? That yeah. Stuff like so that, so I mean, that's, that's like saying <laughs> there exists bicycles. Right. Therefore, no motorcycles exist. Right. <laughs> there can be both. Okay. Yeah. Um, I need to check. I, I did download Durst's app once, and um, I, I, this kind of relates to the next little clip here. Um, and I think he may have changed his app to, to with the whole Antarctica thing, didn't he? He did. It's it's updated since you uh, called him and, out. And so it's like they, he used to have the whole continent like a Google Earth way, and now he's since edited it. So it's funny that, you know, the Internet never forgets, though. Um, we... When he, he admit, I think this is one of those moments where almost like some inspired inspiration of truth is just somehow get a, for a brief moment going through him. Because Jaron and Witsit, I think everybody on the on the cast there was like, why? What is he saying? Why is he saying this? They were like just sitting there, like just with just kind of with speechless for right because they did they didn't think that he was going to say anything like this and admit that there were you know. Yeah, I don't know but, how. It's not allowed. But okay, let's see. Let's hear it. Let's just play. Yeah. You know, Dave, your 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 app has Antarctica on it. You know, you do realize that, right? Around the outskirts. How so? I I have your app, and I went to Antarctica to look for someone, but it would kept loading and loading. Somebody told me that they found some people in Antarctica that downloaded oh, your app. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. We have two guys in, in Antarctica. Okay. One of them at KC Station, and the other one was out in the middle of nowhere. Here he is, right here. Right there. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I right. And I, I was communicating with with him for a while, and um, it was quite interesting. <laughs> and, Dave, and again, I don't know when he changed it. On it. Oh, wait, I don't know when he changed his app. I know it was certainly after this video came out, but um, we'll have. He's like, we're going to have no more of that, right? Yeah. Uh, so, well, did you hear what Jaron said? It was, no. it was just a little thing. Yeah. Jaron said, "What do you mean around the outside?" Oh, right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, Earth's <laughs> map is is a Mercator style projection. It's a big yeah. rectangle. It's yeah. not even it's not even the 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 AE map. Yeah, you know why it's not the AE map? Because he's not he it's he didn't he didn't write yeah. it right. So he he hired right, right. a company to write it, and they're just yeah. using it Google Maps. Yeah, exactly. And so um, and it's, I'm it's sure I'm sure they were careful to flag it so that when they used it, that it didn't, when you zoomed out far enough, so it doesn't show a globe. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and Dearth now is getting so much into this whole big like pond thing, right? Where you have all these other realms beyond the wall, right? It's not just, oh, and, yeah. th and, this, and this is why the lie, right? It's not, it's not so, it's like, it's like, why the lie? Well, there's all these resources beyond the wall. They're hiding from us. All these technologies, all these lands that are, we could all have, our whole, 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 our own paradise, right? We could all have this huge plot of land and unlimited resources. And this is, this is like, is that, is that still kind of as updated? I'm a little out of the loop on his recent why the lie kind of excuse, but that's the last I heard from, from that last documentary. He really yeah, went I, on about that now. I, yeah, I think that's that pond thing. I think he still does. And he's got that map that has a whole bunch of other little, yeah, like circles, like, yeah, which where did a, this where did this come from? It's just it came invented. from the Hawaiian. Yeah, it came from the Hawaiian Times. No, I, no, 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 not that one. It's different. different one. It's oh, he's got a different dozens one. Dozens of other circles. Oh, that one. I've seen that one. Yeah. It's like, yeah, where, did that, where did that come from? It's like, and it's so funny that they're so particular with their evidence of getting these perfect images from space, and we have them. You know, they just. But yet their their model is like not just a cartoon, but it's like a cartoon with where did this even come from is this like coming from even i i mean that i remember i did see that and it's like does anybody know maybe someone in the in the chat there in the audience know yeah. where that came, came i from? don't but flat flat earth millionaire tanner stewart loves that one too and so then tanner yeah. was tanner is the guy behind that that level movie oh okay right right so, yeah now while just now now what was the word that he he mentioned of the thousand mile an hour what 
coming what? out of the rocket. Oh, Firewind, right? <laughs> Firewind. Yeah. Uh, Firewind is a band. <laughs> Firewind. <laughs> They're from Greece. Yeah. <laughs> right there. Uh, it's yeah. a metal band. So uh, I have them up Firewind. on screen right now. Yeah, there it is. I won't that, play. I won't play it, but because uh, I don't want to get a, a copyright strike. But let's see. Are they coming? When are they coming to uh, Minnesota? They're not coming to Minnesota. Come on, Firewind. Oh, man, that's like an interest. That's so funny. That's just like a, a dearth moment there. Um, see, Dragon Force, Firewind, <laughs> North America, twenty twenty two. Oh, did oh they came through at yeah, they did. They hit First Avenue, and I was out of town. Where was I? I couldn't go. I was so I was so stuck. Oh, I yeah. wanted to see him. Dragon huh. Force and Firewind. Anyway, all right. Oh man, uh, that's that's all the derp I brought tonight. Um, but there's more. I mean, I want to actually dearth is to me like one of the best sources of that um oh yeah you watch i need to go through you watch because he's unchallenged and he's he's put himself in the position of a teacher yeah right he's coming on these other channels these other program podcasts and presenting yeah. himself as the teacher i'm gonna teach you all yeah. the truths yeah. Yeah. And, and and it's all wrong and it's all yeah. lies and but his he knows his audience cannot won't know what to say right on any of yeah. these things right so, right you, you uh, he actually you know he actually did that with ken wheeler they did it's, it's not on youtube but they had a whole interview on what's that other platform not youtube rock but the one, rock yeah on rockfin and i actually got just a subscription because i want to get the flat toberfest stuff so i was like you uh, know i got a subscription i'm going to check out some of this other stuff and they had like a whole little forum with with um bob um ken wheeler um and um and dearth and and he was doing this whole pitch and trying to convince ken wheeler the earth was flat and and ken would just sit there kind of smiling it was just it was just the funniest thing because he was like in, he was taking that role of the teacher right and trying to like convince ken wheeler that the earth was flat and it was just so funny looking and, and ken was not budging right he would kind of like you know just nod and um but yeah. you know bob was bob nodal was just like you know kind of bowing before him because it's like one of oh. his idols right yeah ken wheeler's yeah. nonsensical magnetic derpery yeah. is yeah. is the is exactly the kind of word salad that bob yeah. and uh and austin just can't get enough of yeah it, <laughs> and it's like, oh man that's if you guys if you guys can find that on rockfin i mean it's it's a funny one to watch because they just so desperately wanted him to believe oh, the earth. They, they all looked up to him so much. They wanted yeah. him to be part of their team, right? And he was just had nothing to nothing of it. Um yeah. All right, let me let me read this. Anyway. Bill, melodic lyrics says, Don't get me started on his pond map. He still hasn't <laughs> explained how we're sub somehow thermally isolated from all this other land. Right. And it's, oh, is never, there a separate... that, that kind of stuff flat earthers never have to do anything with. Does it's, he address that? Is there a big? Is there like a big dome to cover? Like each pond, little world has its own dome, and there's like well, a big. Dome. When they know? get into when they get into that area, they they have to reject the dome completely. Right. Yeah. Right. And and that's the, the that was a huge thing, uh, that uh, flat out flat Earth millionaire talks about is he's like there's no dome and he's adamant about it. Really. How yeah. does the gas? How does gas pressure can be contained then? How can they? Never mind that. <laughs> That's one of their biggest who, things. <laughs> who knows? Um, oh, I, oh man, that's so that, funny. These are not the droids you're looking for. Is is uh, all that they get there? Wow, and that's one of their biggest talking points, especially like Nathan Oakley. I mean, and... oh yeah, well, and but but you know the the generally the relig religious religious say there's a dome. Yeah. Right. So, and that was part of the contention. Um, Tanner and uh, uh, Nathan Thompson, yeah, had a disagreement about that. I offered to host and moderate the debate between them, <laughs> between Thompson and Tanner Stewart, 
because Thompson wanted to debate, debate was demanding that that T Stu uh, yeah. debate him on whether or not there's a dome. Like you're, it's just an argument about whoever's the stupidest. Look, you're <laughs> both stupid. You're both right. wrong. Oh wow. I mean, this is the things that flat earthers, I don't think they really get just how some of these ridiculous notions, they don't really question them because the flat earthers are always trying to just debunk the globe, right? They just take the attention off of their ridiculous model and try to focus it on, you know, fake, the moon landing was fake. They just, all this stuff on, they just keep going on and on about that, right? Without providing like any type of really good model of, 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 of their own, uh, I mean, only any type of, you know, description of their own model that's even remotely coherent. Yeah. Because um, they, they all disagree on some very, all that fundamental thing, that some really important stuff. Where's the sun, inside or outside the dome? I mean, they can't even agree on some really like you would think <laughs> are essential points uh, to having a, a, you know, kind of a model of reality. Um, Somebody is reporting that Mark Sargent has a meetup in Minneapolis coming up. Or that he's a. Uh... Oh, maybe you could do a little live stream from that. It'd be a fun. <laughs> Can you get a disguise like and look, get disguised a little? <laughs> no doubt Mark won't be there. Oh, okay. um, so where, where is, uh, there it is. September 23rd. Oh, I, I'm out. I, is that a, yeah, I'm I'm out of town that day. Yeah, I had I had seen that, but I knew I'd be out of town. Mad Jacks in the cabin room. <laughs> yep. Mad Jacks in the cabin room. Oop, I didn't put it on screen. There it is on screen. There it is. Yep, there's the uh, the Stone Arch Bridge. There's, I don't, I'm guessing that's a painting. There you go. All right, I don't know where Mad Jacks is, but no, I can't make that. Yeah, I can't make that. Too bad. I Mark would love to. I would love to. I I don't think that they would. Uh, they they in, in welcome me with open arms. For some reason, yeah, I'd, I'd go. I'd go to if Mark Sargent came to my area. I'd, I'd want to go. Mark's Mark won't be there. He won't be okay. No, he just he's he's um he likes to announce these meetups, but he generally mm. doesn't go to them. So. Hmm. Uh, anyway, Uh, oh, Peter! Peter Collings said he had some fire wind after my Friday night curry. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. So, so Bryant, how long? How long do we have you? Huh? How long do I we have you back? Well, I mean, like I told you, I mean, I have you know internet business, then it's going pretty smoothly. So it kind of, I have. We'll see. I mean, it's kind of a big, you know, I, uh, so certainly on probably more. Okay. More of me for a while. I, I got some plans this whole month at least. I mean, I'm going to do a lot of stuff this month. Okay. And then we'll take it one month at a time. You know, see how it goes. Cool. All right. Well, I have a, I have something I'm working on on Witsit's uh, electrostatic nonsense. Mm. Um, and I'll I'll uh, I'll be sure to to rope you in a little bit as I uh, yeah no absolutely that's one of my out. one of my specialties is debunking a like you know the flat Earth electrostatic model of gravity. <laughs> Because it's, uh, they don't like it, but yeah, that's, that's a fun one. Because to me, it's just so easy. I don't, I don't, it's like they, they, they try to talk around it and it's just, I, they just have to change the topic and attack our model. That's what Witsit loves to do, right? That's he just it, loves, yeah. He just comes right after the dark, oh, dark matter. And, you know, you guys yeah. don't understand 96% of the universe and, you know, your yeah. model, you yeah, know, but, he doesn't. But Austin, you say the earth is flat. So listen to this. Positive claims have the burden of proof. Yep. Yeah. So I mean, many I, positive I, claims. I, I'd be makes. open to having a discussion with Austin just to, if we can just talk about his model of, of gravity and not talk about ours. Let's just make it a, a talk on just his model. Because I want to I want to really understand 
what the what his what their current model of gravity is as far as because it's always well, changing, right? It's kind I have of, I have ten thousand dollars for for Austin. Oh right, <laughs> right. I I, 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 I have I reissued my my gravity challenge from almost five years ago, four and a half years yeah. ago, with yeah. the with the money that I have in escrow now. Yeah, that all they need to do is is show the magnitude and direction derive yeah. it and and four different places on the earth yeah right and and because it varies and yeah. show and do it better all they need to do is do it better than gravity and none have tried yeah. right yeah base the, they never read the challenge they never do anything yeah standard flurfs they they can't even you know figure that out so i got today on tiktok somebody said wood floats and and metal sinks yeah pay, pay me that was it <laughs> like like what are you talking about oh, like disproved gravity no you didn't i but mean that, the challenge it. wasn't for you to just say some words yeah you didn't even look at the challenge remember in our debate though i almost got wits at the really we got the coulombs law he agreed but then he quickly changed the subject so it's like okay we got we got nine point eight. So tell, I, he wouldn't get into like how do we get nine point eight from Coulomb's law? Coulomb's law, right? No. Well, he wouldn't go. He can't go there because you're never going to get it from there. No, you can't. Well, that's it, why it, he says it's just the vector. It's all you get is the, the vector. It's just, from it. it's just the kinematics. And then it's equation. kinematics. Okay, it's so how? Kinematics. So, so how? What? What's the downward acceleration at Fortaleza, Brazil? Kinematics. Yeah. No, no, no. You yeah. don't measure it first. You have to predict it. Then we go measure it yeah. to see if your prediction yeah. matches. Yeah. It's the, you and I. It's the standard way of doing. It's from Feynman. He he no, references it's from Feynman. Feynman. And, and, and what he doesn't seem to understand is our model can predict that. And because we live on an ellipsoid, the gravitational acceleration changes by latitude, right? Yeah. Just perfectly matching our model and by altitude. And so they can't, they, they just, kinematics only works in one location. And that you know, you take, and it's not a, not exactly nine point eight. It depends on where you're living, right? So, um, so that whole kinematics argument is, is doesn't isn't doesn't doesn't hold as you and I both know. But that's yeah. all they got. They I can't get them past that. That's that's as far as they go because they can't. They because they, 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 electrostatics, density, buoyancy, none of those things are ever going to give you nine point eight yeah. in and of themselves. All right, I have I have a little anyway. quick homework. Um, yep. There's a link to Mikey Smith because uh, Ken brought it up. Mikey Smith, uh, everybody just go onto that video there, his his most recent video, and just say, why don't you do MC Tunes Gravity Challenge? Just just some you think it up yeah. in your own words. Yeah. That's number one. Yeah. Uh, of course, number two, you got to go to Mark Sargent. You got to go to his channel and say, when are you quitting Flat Earth? Um, <laughs> anyway, that's anyway. what I got. That's what we have. Um People be looking out for more videos from uh, Bryant. Uh, could could a moderator drop the link again into the chat there? And if you haven't yet subscribed, make sure you do. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, get some get my subscribers going up again because um, and Dearth is kind of the one of my it used to be Witsit, right? But now it's Dearth. Dearth. This is like the because um, he is kind of the big godfather right now, of flat Earth in a yeah, way. He's 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 the leading the charge on flat Earth evangelism. Yes, yes, that's a good way of putting it. Yeah. Right so, all right. Um, Thanks, Brian. Well, this is fun. This has Thank been you. fun, as always. Yeah. 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 And um, yes, well, we'll, uh, well, let me know about the electrostatics. That's one of my favorite. Oh, yeah. Why there's the bunking topics. Um, I've got, <laughs> I've got some diodes over in a box here. Okay. How about that? <laughs> right. All right, everybody. Right. We'll see you next time. All right. Good night.